Brett Perigo, tonight's second place finisher. Plenty of fans here, Brett, and a solid second place finish. Yeah, I got to shout out the uh, Turn 2 Terror Boards over there. Uh, they're all a bunch of good guys to hang out with, talk to. I, I really like them. doing the night man hey i'm talking here <laughs> you know who you're talking to <laughs> my yeah. do man <laughs> on my way The second one. <laughs> <laughs> Your choice. It's a oh. trap. I feel like it is. I feel like he's, <laughs> he's setting up fights in the front stretch. Is what he's trying to do. <laughs> Way. We've got Devin Board with us at Keen Motorsports Shop here with Kyle Keen. Sitting here with Sean Keen. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the racing history. Yep. April 15th, 2024. We are the Turn Two Terribles. Thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. Uh, we got a great show for you tonight. We got Ashley Capetta back. Uh, again, to uh, talk about the Weldon Sterner Memorial that's coming up this week weekend, twenty thousand dollars to win four tens, and also a big payday, a bigger payday for the three fifty eight. We're going to talk about that. We're going to recap BAPS yesterday, a, a banger of a race at Port Royal. Everything else that happened this past week, and also take a preview of other races that are happening this upcoming week. You know the deal. Um, also, something cool that Ashley is doing. You know, we'll, when we bring her on, is um, she will be taking uh, a random fan that puts their uh, comments and questions in the chat tonight. So, if you were listening to this live, please make sure you're in the chat. Be active tonight and uh, put get yourself in there for a chance to win a prize giveaway. So, we'll talk more about that here in a second. But, fellas, how are you guys doing? Awesome, man! What a what a great weekend. Um... You know, obviously Friday didn't work out here for uh, for Williams Grove, but Saturday we got some racing in. We got to see some racing Sunday. Um, I don't know if I ever remember the Northeast being this windy this many weekends in a row in my life. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why bad. is it so windy all the time lately? I and I maybe maybe I I forget every year, but man, I I, I couldn't believe it. I thought Sunday we were going to get a break from it, and we did not get a break from the wind. But uh, great weekend. It was nice to have the sun out. Um, <laughs> What is my audio off? No, you're good. Mine doesn't feel like it's off. Braden, it's your internet, yeah. like your computer and your iRacing speed. But um <laughs> get good fella. No, great weekend, Chris. How was your weekend, buddy? Had a great time. Got back to the racetrack there Sunday. Had a great day all day long. Adventurous day, but a great day with Jimmy and company. Try to turn in the mic. Got to see some friends. Other way. Other way. Other way. So you're looking. There you go. This way. Oh. oh, that's so much better. Fancy technology. Oh. Jimmy gave me this toy to play with, and I don't know how to use it. So I'm going to do this the rest of the show. But, um, <laughs> Still don't sound like talking in a tin can anymore. So that's, no, we, that's we, upgrade. Yesterday was, was hella fun. We saw a lot of friends, um, both in all divisions. 
sprint cars, wingless sportsmen. It's kind of kind of my job now. So enjoyed it. And hi, Ant. I see you in the chat. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Hey, thanks for chiming in. Um, man, it's a cool thing for Ashley to get us some some exposure and get some comments going in here, start the discussion tonight. And uh, hopefully, you know, one of you guys are going to, guys or gals, uh, leave with a gift tonight, I believe, yeah. right? So pretty cool. I'm not scared of the rain. All right. Let's, before we go back and talk <laughs> about this past weekend, let's look forward to this weekend. Big, big race. Let's bring her on, Ashley Capetta. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me again. And listen, you're one of the one. You're an elite company. One of the few guests to be on twice. Okay, so Thank talked you. about it in fall. We were ready to go for for the Sterner. Obviously, it got postponed. Um, let's do a refresher, right? Because I don't remember all the details. You have a million things that you've worked on, put together for both drivers, fans, and everything else. And then, what has the winter been like leading up to it? Has there been more work done? Where are you at with everything? So we, what we actually have been working on is a few things with actually one of my racing sponsors. Um, I can't give those details yet because we're waiting to finalize on their end uh, what they what they can do. Um, unfortunately, like the person, nothing has changed, and the reason like none of that has changed is because we decided to do a second race in september so we kind of just wanted to take the one that we have now and just leave it alone um i don't know how much the second one this year is going to pay out just because we kind of want to see how this race goes because i wouldn't feel comfortable going to a sponsor and saying hey uh do you want to sponsor the one in september well you didn't even see the one that was supposed to be last year yet um so i wanted to hopefully everything works out the way that we have it planned and the sponsors are happy the fans are happy and it'll just be easier for me to say okay can you come back for september um so the fan zone we're still doing that the only thing that's different about the fan zone is we're not doing the <coughs> excuse me the track or treat deal because obviously we're not in the fall um if easter would have been like after this weekend, it would have worked out. But um, there's going to be some other things that I think will make up for that. Um, hopefully my sponsor is just going to cross my fingers that everything goes well with that. Um, I'll probably go by the middle of the week what they're going to do. Um, they're going to set up behind my car. I just don't know what exactly they're going to do. But it's going to be something for the fans. Um, Chad Trout's going to have giveaways, uh, $2 off coupons still at his trailer for 100 fans and then i'll have two dollar off at mine van will be signing autographs in the fan zone and chuck reiner um then all the drivers that are supposed to be there i know we're going to open the at 2 30 for the drivers to have like an hour to get parked so i'm hoping a lot of drivers come and you know be a part of this because as long as i've been around racing um I do not, <coughs> excuse me, remember Lincoln ever opening the pits to have fans come in and, you know, see that side for free. So I'm hoping that a lot of drivers take that opportunity because after the races, I mean, if it's late, people don't get to go in and see the drivers because um, most of the 410s are gone by the time we're done. So I'm just hoping that a lot of drivers come out and be a part of it for the fans. So with this also being a 358 show, are you going to even have time to race a race car? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I actually made like a model plan of what I need to do and how, and I kind of have everybody kind of designated to like spots and things. So it should be okay. I mean, God willing, like nothing, I'm not even going to put it out in the universe. Everything <laughs> should hopefully work out. Um, right. So I have like somebody that's going to come with me. Um, I'll have like, so all the drivers that win the heat races will get a hundred dollar bonus. Um, so we got like little so we got boards and stuff that has like the sponsors on it. So I have a photographer that's going to be with me pretty much that all we have to do is go up, give them the board, give them the cash. And then, so pretty much I'll be working on stuff with that. Um, with like the photographer and then I'll end up in the tower probably for like half of the 410 feature, if not most of the 410 feature. So I can go down in victory lane quick, do that ceremony with them. And then, 
um, just walk across the track and hop in the car. So I told my crew, I said, you have one job this weekend and that's to make sure, you know, we communicate what the car needs. I'll get in the car, do what I got to do. And then I'll probably be doing something. And, um, it seems like everybody's on the same page, so it should be okay. <clears throat> so the, the, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, and, and this was a topic last week and probably not in necessarily a, a great way, uh, when Lincoln rescheduled to Sunday, mm -hmm. right? They, they moved the race to Sunday and they cut the URC 358s off the show, made it a 410 only show, and the admission in the gate was the same. What's the admission here for, for, for general admission this weekend? Um, and with all these other things going on and, and twenty thousand dollars win, I expect it to be fairly hefty. I didn't look it up. What is the uh, admission this week? So for the, <coughs> I apologize. I did tell these guys before this all started. I've been sick for like three weeks with some kind of sinus allergy stuff. I finally right, got just, a prescription today. So if I'm coughing, I'm really sorry because it is a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be thirty dollars to get in for. And, you know, I had some people like upset about it today. And I'm like, look, I, you know, there, there's people speculating that Lincoln State did not help us at all. Um, and that's, that's definitely not the case. They did help us. Um, they extended the first from second through uh, 24th. So they did help us. Pat and I decided ourselves to add to that. Um, I forget what the total amount is that Lincoln gave, but it was a huge chunk of change and people just don't realize that, um, Pat and I and all of our sponsors did do a lot of work, but Lincoln Speedway, um, especially Emily Winslow has helped us a ton to get all the stuff out there, promote and, you know, put everything on Lincoln's page behind the scenes. She's given, you know, a lot of advice and different things. So, and Jerry has been helpful as well believe it or not i know a lot of people have views with him and you know he has been helpful um so everybody's like oh it's 30 dollars to get in well i just looked and set friday night at williams grove is 25 dollars to win for eight or i'm sorry 25 dollars to get in for an eight thousand to win show so for five dollars more you're going to see 40 laps two open wheel divisions a fan zone over I'd say, well, with the bags alone that we're giving away with the goodies in it, there's probably, I'd say, with the T-shirts, the footballs, everything that we're doing, there's probably over 1,200 giveaways going out at Lincoln on Saturday. Um, plus what potentially what hap might happen with my sponsor and stuff. So there's a lot of different things for $5 more that you're going to get. Yes, it sucks. The economy sucks. We all know that. But any given show that's this big, you're going to unfortunately have to pay that price. Do I agree to pay $30? No, but I don't have the choice. Pat don't have the choice. Um, and this is just what it is, unfortunately. Um, but I'm hoping it doesn't steer too many people away. Cause like I said, we have the tote bags full of different goodies. Um, we have the fan zone with different giveaways and hits to start. Um, we have the t-shirt toss, we have the football toss, Chuck's Auto Parts Solutions. Um, he's doing the cornhole tournament um, that you can win cash. Uh, there's custom set of boards, a Brian Monteith trophy. And then five people that catch the top five driver's footballs get $100 cash. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that will be going on at the track for $5 more than what Williams Grove is. And this is not to, you know, bash Williams Grove because they got to do what they're going to, you know, what they need to do as well. But, you know, everybody sees three zero and people get upset. I, I mean, I see drivers selling t-shirts for $30 and hoodies, $50, but people are buying those. So it's like, I don't know if I was, a, you know, I am a fan before I'm a driver, I would go and support, not just because I'm helping promote this, but because everything that's going on, you don't want to see people like myself or Pat say, well, this support was awful. We're not going to worry about doing this big of a race and do all this extra stuff if we don't get the support. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's obviously, there's a lot of time and hours put into this. And I'm, you know, I'm excited to see it all come 
forward, but I'm really hoping we have the fan support. Um, you know, it's not just for the fans, you know, obviously the drivers deserve that extra pay, both classes. Um, but you got to have good fan support to make it feel like you're and a good car account to feel like all your work was appreciated and hope. Uh-oh. Cut off. I, th and I think she, uh, Hit her, hit button. Button. I'm sure she'll be right back. Perfect time for honestly, perfect time for a segue and a break. Chris, go ahead. Actually, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, she says I don't know what happened. Like, I I are... Hit something on my phone and it just went. <laughs> happens. It happens. No, it's, it's, it, she she touched on a lot of good things there that are important. Like she spent. I know last time actually we had you here before the last event. It was supposed to happen. You already put six months worth of work into it, and now we're almost six months later doing it again. So you almost a year. This yes. amount of work you and your team put into this. Um, you have drivers and fans that want racetracks to do more. <clears throat> you you and your team have done that. If they can't show up and support that, then why bother, right? Why why right. bother if you're Lincoln Speedway, if you're Wieners Grove, do anything for race fans if you're not going to get the turnout anyway, right? And, and right. it's $10 more than a weekly show, whatever it is. It's it's a big race. It's $20,000 to win. It's a major event. That's the point. This event is, is a major early season race at the way it worked out. So I was like, Thirty dollars to me, it's just part of it. Like, it's still a lot given back to the fans that they would not get for paying twenty dollars on a regular show. Absolutely. Yeah, and I even look at it this way: that what really came to my mind is not just the fans supporting it just because you should, and there's all these things going on. Imagine the drivers the way they've raced this year for five and six grand. What kind of show are we going to get for twenty thousand dollars on the line? And you got Freddie and Troy and Danny and you know Borden said they're going to pick and choose. I don't know if they're running for point support, so they might end up at Lincoln this weekend. You know, you get these guys that are going to go out there for twenty grand, and you're not going to have these these huge invaders, right? They're all going to be out the road, so it's going to be our guys supporting most of our guys local going after it for twenty grand. Like if you can't come out to watch for that. What are you going to watch? Uh, that ju Not just what Ashley's done to give back to the fans, but holy shit, if I'm out there racing for six grand one week and I'm willing to throw a slider and wreck a guy or or take a shot at it and say it's winter to wear it kind of thing, what the hell are you going to do for 20 grand? So, you know, points aside, man, that's a big payday for April. And, and man, I'm excited for just that. The hype of we're like, what are these guys willing to go do to win this race? I, I, that's exciting to me. Even then, like the start money, teams talk about start money, and you guys have spread that money not only just from the top all the way down. So if you're a race team, you're like we need fans in the stands to sell merch, well, go support people that are promoting a race to get fans in the stands for one, and you get the start money to also help your own cause. Like, so there's no one here unless you have a good reason. I know uh, Marie Beasley, she's got to go softball, won't be able to make it. We understand that kind of stuff. But if you're willingly choosing not to go there, you better have a good reason, or else I don't want to see you complaining in any comment sections on Sunday morning. Yeah, um, the payout's actually good. I mean, as best as what we could get it to. Um, I was actually, that's what I was sitting here looking at. So the 358 will start at 225 which is $100 more than what we normally get on a Saturday night. Um, and then with what, with what Lincoln added second through 24th, um, it'll be 875 to take the green. So with what Lincoln helped us with, that's we added an extra $175 um 12th through 24th and then a hundred dollars from 11th up to fifth because i focused on the bottom um i didn't focus on the top model i mean obviously we're given twenty thousand to win um but you have you know 23 guys that get a lot less so i focus on the 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 guys like uh, i don't want to use anybody for an example because i don't want somebody to feel offended or feel a type of way but just say somebody that doesn't have like a danny dietrich um budget no offense to danny i mean he has a good car owner um like a devin borden or a troy wagman where they you know they have good equipment and can do different things that you know somebody else like a trey hivner where he can't he doesn't have the same budget as those guys so he might be a little bit more careful um so when you think of guys like that and start at 875 and work up the whole way i feel like that's just as important as the guy running and i know some people are like well what about second and third well i'm sorry nobody's going to run second and third um <laughs> for a twenty thousand to win race so <laughs> Right. Um, so right. If you're second or third, and you're there to win, right? Like right. You're, yeah. You're, so you're not point, the crowd we're aiming for here. 
Right. And there's an extra bonus um, for two positions. Um, I can't announce that yet because I, I think they want to announce that on Saturday. But there will be two spots that will be getting an extra bonus money. Um, so throughout the field, I don't know if they're going to announce that for the 410 feature. Um, but I think it's going to be pretty cool with that as well. So, Matt Campbell, if you're watching or listening, do you hear that? Are you going to throw the slider this week? <laughs> if it's for the win, Matt, are you going to throw the slider this week? That's what I got to know. And Matt probably doesn't have enough signal to watch this, but I, I hope we <laughs> are going to copy of the video. And I want to know if Matt Campbell will be willing to throw the slider this week for 20 grand. So, yeah. um, <laughs> anybody that has a so, chance probably would. Uh, you know, that's what I'm saying, right? So I'm there for just as much as all the stuff that you're giving back to the fans, as much as these guys are, they're going to put it on the line, you know, to get after it. So, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm fired up about it. 40 laps is a long race. You know, we, we in Fred Putney, we trust, right? He's going to have it ready to go. And it's going to be good for 40 laps. Maybe the heats aren't going to be great again. Who knows what the weather is, whatever. I'm there for the feature. 40 laps is anybody can win from anywhere. So, you know, it's time trials. Um, what is the format? Are we doing uh, – do you know if they're going to do, like, one car at a time, two at a time, four at a time? Uh, and then what's the format after that? So it's supposed to be what the all-star format is. Um, so that's what we were supposed to do last year. Um, and then the 358s, we only had one race. It's going to be a draw, redraw type of situation, which, ugh, don't get me started on that. Um with our pill draw luck, but it'll be okay. What, whatever it will be, it will be like the first week I was sick and I started dead last and got up to third, made the invert. So it'll be okay. If I can do that sick, I should be okay. Not sick. I did see that somebody asked in the comments about event merchandise. Um, we will have event merchandise. Um, off of turn four, where all the so there's going to be two spots for merchandise Saturday. Where the outlaw guys normally set up, there will be some of the merch vans and t-shirt trailers down there because we won't probably have enough room for everybody depending on who's coming. Um, but ours will be off of four. It will be my merchandise and the Sterner stuff off the same area that we set up the first week that we ran. So we will have that. Um, Plenty of it. So that's actually what I'm wearing right now is the the memorial shirt. Actually, let me grab, hang on. I can grab another shirt to show you the back. And while you're doing that, are there going to be any cars done up this year for, for this event um, in the Sterner 69 scheme schemes or maybe yours? Yes, I will have it. Dad Trout will have it. Awesome. Beautiful. So I definitely want to thank them for offering to do that for us because um, we didn't have anybody that came forward. And uh, Randy, Chad, our owner, offered, and that meant a lot to have somebody offer to do that. Justin, Justin um, I'm in hot laps. I've suggested that for a long time, but nobody listens i think you know i like what batch does with that to be honest the group time the group hot laps i i really like that a lot over the handicapping um and or just a random draw uh do it in the groups kind of like baps has been doing it um you know i feel like lincoln a lot of times that first group has a pretty big disadvantage it's usually pretty slow so, you know, if you're in the first half of that first group, that could be a little bit of an issue. Uh, but other than that, man, by the time they're going, it, it is all equal. You know, in 358, you could probably put eight of them on the track at a time, kind of, if you did the groupings right. Yeah. Um, but I think there could be some creativity there for that division. I, I think the, I think you got, you all would like a change up there versus the luck of the draw and or couple good races and you're stuck in a handicap so and and who knows what the track's like in the heat race so uh chris jimmy what do you got go ahead jimmy why don't you hit some fan questions a lot of comments a lot of yeah. questions go ahead a lot of them coming in first i do want to point out troy savager guys if matt campbell wins he could probably cut get me airfare to pa to cut the mullet <laughs> <laughs> if you if you didn't listen to the podcast last week we had matt on and troy's from new zealand and um 
we were talking about if he, you know, if he won something about uh, cutting his mullet off and him coming over for that. So definitely if he wins this one, he should definitely, definitely think about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first here, let's go with Santos. I'm curious, uh, have you ever thought of doing a tribute card for Hodnet with how big of a Hodnet fan you are? Um, I've thought about it, but I feel like Greg really wasn't that big of a fan of Lincoln. Um, I don't really, I can't remember what the reason was, but he was a big port guy. So I feel like if I ran port, that would make a little bit more sense. Um, if Lincoln would do something for Greg, absolutely. Um, I actually said to my dad the other day about if one of these years we'll do like kind of like a scheme like the Apple car, but obviously like run my number. Um, but it feels if I did something like that, it would be something that I would talk to like Mike Hefner, Sherry, um, cause the Apple car was always my favorite, but I just feel like there would be a lot of people involved, um, Maybe in the future, but right now it's not really uh, something that I just like we've talked about at this point. <clears throat> a lot of comments here. A lot of people putting in here. To, you know, they see the work that you're putting in. It's getting recognized there, there, and they really love what you're doing. So there's there's a ton of them in here, which is great. Um, uh, I want to know: Is there? I don't want to say the R word. I know you said they're doing something in September, but is there a contingency plan if? something were to happen on Saturday? Um, we didn't really talk about it yet because we're just trying not to put that in the air. Right? Yeah. Um, Thanks, Jimmy. I'm know, just, hey. I know Sunday <laughs> wouldn't be an option because isn't somebody running Sunday? Seals Seals Grove. Grove. Yeah. That's what I thought. So I definitely wouldn't be that type of person to run against that, um, especially since it's, what, their opener, I'm assuming. Yes, um, it is. So I guess we would have to sit and figure that out, but I know we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that we can get the show in. But, you know, at the same token, you know, Jerry and I both said tonight where, what if we're in a situation where the rains, like if it is supposed to do any of that, you also don't want to have an unsuccessful event because right. of weather. So it's like, right. so we're just hoping we're praying to Weldon <laughs> Sterner that he helps us, you know, chase all the rain away yeah i think you'll be fine you know i i, but I did want to ask that question just in case uh, is it 2000 to win for the 358s on saturday asked tyler no it's 1669 is what we decided um we focus more on building you know the purse instead of the winner's share not that the winner's not important um but you know with the paid heat races and the hard chargers and all that stuff we just figured I mean, yeah, I know we only win eleven hundred, but, but we add five hundred on, and you know, worry about everybody else through the field. Because I mean, normally we get one twenty-five a night, um, which is not much of anything. So I felt like it was more important to focus on that um, instead. Chris, you got anything? Well, I want to circle back here. Something that Troy Savage said earlier that caught my eye. Talking about the ticket price, and I know we touched on it some. So he's from. A different place and mm -hmm. I, it, it goes back to we're talking like pa where we're a little spoiled over there it's 50 dollars. whatever that you can yeah, do over New Zealand. but um, um we're spoiled here all of our races <laughs> week to week are 20 30 bucks tops unless it's an outlaw show nationally sanctioned race they it's just kind of interesting to see a guy chime in from all the way over in a different continent <laughs> and then be like yeah it's 50 bucks a night and we don't pay anything Ooh. like that <laughs> it's like okay um I guess my question, actually, I know we, before I asked you about promoting more, and you're like, no, hell no, but it's something you're passionate about, obviously. So when, when the racing days are over, whenever that may be, is this something you want to pursue? That, kind of piggybacking on the Hodnet thing, they do a lot of the Greg Hodnet Foundation stuff for his races. Would that be something you want to get a part in just because you're so passionate about you're so racing passionate. As, a, as a whole? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much long. Well, I don't really plan to retire like, this year, I know next year, it sounds like we're definitely going to go again at it next year. Um, I just know, I don't know what the future of the 358s is, um, you know, with the the shortage of the head deal and going to aluminum, like I don't aluminum. know, like 360s or, you know, what's going to happen with that. So 
Um, unfortunately, I have thought, you know, what am I going to do in the future? I know I don't have a budget for a 410. So as long unless somebody comes up with a big checkbook, um, <laughs> I would love to take on promoting. I like to help other people. Um, I'm very passionate, obviously, about the sport. So it's like I would love to do right. it. Um, and, and that's kind of why I asked that because you're passionate about it and you're thinking outside. You're thinking – in a way that's different than the promotion we've had, not calling anyone out, just like you talk about racetrack promotion. Everyone's kind of gotten, I don't know, kind of stuck into the, the book or the old school way. And you, you and your team are thinking outside the box. And I think it's good for sprint car racing. And the more experience you have doing it, it's only going to make you even better at it. So I, I would love for someone like you to stay involved to, in any capacity. I mean, obviously racing number one, but we, we don't all live forever. So at some point, Racing is not an option. So how do you stay involved? That I would love to see you as a, maybe the, like an Alan Chrysler level promoter. Like I think you have that that eye for the business, and I want to keep that involved. Well, I appreciate the kind words. I mean, it's definitely something I've been told by a lot of people since doing this. So I, it is something that I would enjoy, and it is something that I've thought about. Um, you know, obviously, if I'm not racing, it's something that I could take on. Um, I think it would definitely be something cool sitting in like the promoter side of things, like since I've started this deal, I did not realize like all the headaches that they have to go through. <laughs> like, of course, all of us get on the internet and be like, Oh yeah, they should have did this or "Oh, why did they do that? You know, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, some things I still kind of like, yeah, I don't agree with, but there's just some things where you're kind of, you're stuck either way. It's a double ended sword. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely enjoy to do it. Um, what kind of helped me with this race, I think, is with me doing our fundraiser that we do every year, I kind of took with some of the stuff that we do in our fundraiser and kind of, like, put that and flipped it and kind of thought, okay, what do fans like? What would make fans feel special? I mean, obviously, it's not like you could get everybody a gift card, you know, or something right. like that, or cash coming in the gate. But something to make them feel like they actually matter to be there. Because I remember when I was a kid, like, we had Pepsi night, and they gave out, like, bottles of Pepsi or cans of Pepsi and, like, different right. stuff. Um, kids night, when I was younger, was completely different than hey. today's kids night. Hey. Um, bouncy houses and everything at Winters Grove, man. Like, it was wild. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah. So, <laughs> you just think of, like, all the different giveaways. Like, I remember Hoosier giveaways and stuff like that when I was younger. So it's like everybody likes something free, no matter what it is. I mean, you could give somebody a pen that says Sterner Memorial on it, and they'd be like, oh, I want a free pen. So it's you just think, you know, luckily we had some great local companies. Um, our presenting sponsor, Chuck's Auto Parts Solutions, help out to give stuff for the bags, Gettysburg Trading Post, um, where I sell my antiques at. They helped um, pay for the bags, you know, for the fans. Um, Snyder's of Hanover, they stepped up and, you know, gave some pretzels to put in the bag. So um, I think it's important to have those type of things for fans to, I mean, a little snack in the grandstands, nobody will be upset about for sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, Follow-up question. So I saw you were looking for peeps. You had a bunch of peeps. <laughs> yeah. I have more peeps have though. So I will bring some or maybe I'll give them to Jeremy. I don't know if I'll make it or not. Either way. There's still peeps I have just for you. Oh, just in well, case you need some stale peeps. Peeps. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jimmy, what, any more questions coming in? <laughs> yeah, we got a couple more. Um, for uh, Scooter Scooter here is coming up from North Carolina on Saturday. What time does everything start? So the fan zone will begin at four o'clock. Um, I know the driver, the pit gates will open for drivers only, two thirty to three thirty to get everybody parked. Um, but the fan zone will open at four and I think they're going to open the grandstands as well at four o'clock. Um, but obviously, you know, if you want to save the $2 off, like I said, Chad Trout and myself will both have coupons at our trailers to give you that $2 off. So it'll be 27 bucks. How, or no, I'm sorry, $28 to get in, um, instead of 30. And I know it's only two bucks, but Hey, you know, that's hey. 200 fans that will get some extra dollars off there. Um, and I think uh, time trials, I think we proposed for 630. 
Um, Cody Ryder here, are rain checks good for this race? Yes, they are. Um, I saw Lincoln commenting back to people. Um, you can use it. I don't know if there's going to be an up chart. Like, you know how in the past, if you had a pit ban and it was more, they try, I don't know if that's a thing. I didn't ask. I could find out. Um, but that's something that, um, I know you can use the pit ban for this weekend. Um, Santos asks, if you were in charge of weekly 358 racing, what would the first thing you change to make the product, uh, sustainability better? Definitely the pay um, would be one of the first things that I would change 100%. Uh, I'd wipe that pill draw crap out of there um, <laughs> and do time pop situation, um, maybe do some time trial shows. To, you know, if you're going to go to a 410, you need time trial experience. So what better way most guys start in a 358 and then go to a 410. Um, in my entire career of 12 years I've been racing, I've had one time trial show in my life. Um, and that was at Lincoln. I'm pretty sure the first year I started. Um, so I feel like that would be a huge thing, um, that I would definitely change is the pay and the format a hundred percent. Uh, scooter scooter said he'll be there by three. So that's awesome. That's cool. If you're getting people from out of state to come in for this, that goes great. to show how good of a, of, uh, of a show this is going to be and how much work you're putting into it, you know, is paying off here. Oh, I have one um, thing I'd also change in 358s. Actually, I'd change it for any open wheel. In my opinion, if it's a pill draw show and you're just starting, you should not be allowed to pill draw for three to five weeks. Um, just because, I, yeah, it's and it's not just against the, the drivers. Is that like a rule that used to be a thing? Like it was your first yeah. races, you had it, you had no choice. I know, like Craig Perigo said, like he was just starting out. No matter what he did, he had to start. The last rows until they deemed him worthy <laughs> yeah i feel like it's kind of important um it's it's respect i mean when i first started um i started in the back every week and i started at trailways as soon as i got lapped i got i mean it's quick to get lapped at trailways but as soon as i got lapped i got off the field like i i did not stay out there i did not start up front until i had brad mcclellan and jeff Verball's blessing to give it a shot and I was like, I don't know, but they said, you got to try it. So I did. Um, but I just feel like a lot of these kids today don't have the same respect um, as back in the day. And um, I just feel like that's something that should not be allowed in any series to, you know, you could start next week, Jay-Z, and you could pill draw, you know, draw the one and you could start up front and you could wreck everybody in that heat race. Like, I'm, 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 not, I'm not, <laughs> not cool with that. Between the three of us, he has the best shot of not wrecking everybody. So there's there's that. <laughs> I saw somebody ask, uh, Santos asked about the three by five and the five by five. Yep. Personally, I'm a three by five person. Um, I know they're goofy as heck looking. Um, but honestly, I think we had better racing in the 358s with the three by five. I don't care what anybody says. When we ran 360 with the three by five against the 360s with our three, five, three by five wings, we did. I could start in the back and just pass them. Um, like it was, it was easy. Um, I missed the three by five. Like I said, they're goofy as heck. Um, but I feel like it made better racing for the three fifty eights. And I know some people are going to argue. I think honestly, some guys like the five by five because of the stability. Um, but it's okay. We all like uh, we all like training wheels, man. Yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> I was going to say put the three by five on the four ten and. You can do all this wicker bill oh. stuff to death. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> at least a Figure dish would be nice to at least allow us to have a dish, you know, weighing for a 358. But it is what it is. I we just, all adapt and moved on, and it is what it is now. I I, I personally Ashley, love uh, Goofy <laughs> Rings wings, so it's fine. I think oh, actually competitive the 410s to run port weekly would be, you know, that's the ticket. Put a 410 in it. Go to Port racing every week in 410 and and uh, put a hot net scheme on it. I'm I'm in. <laughs> That'd oh, yeah. be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Nate's. know if I'd be the one banging the boards though. I'd probably be like Lance, you know, kind of. Yes, the you would be. You're right. Yes, we know. Okay. Yes. Be a it's okay. Board banger. <laughs> and and that's right. perfectly that's perfectly fine. That's where I would be too. I'm hey, I did run the top at Lincoln the other week. 
when I ran in the feature and my cousin said to me when I came in, she's like, were you, you definitely were sick out there because you did not <laughs> go up there. I, said, well, I was getting frustrated because there was like two or three of them. It was two of them that was on the bottom and I was like, I couldn't get around them. So I just got frustrated and tried to move up top, but I just didn't, it just didn't work because the guy slid in front, one of the guys slid in front of me and took my line away. If he wouldn't have took that away, I would have had both of them, but it's all good. Look at you passing in the heat race and running the top. It's like a new Ashley Capetta. I love it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Uh, Nate says, "Can Shr Kenny Schrader race wings shaped like cream pies?" Uh, Nate, Nate was trying to steal me yesterday. He he was hitting with me and everything, man. Oh my god! I, I thought about it, Nate, though. But my date was hotter than you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brandon so it was it was a date. Okay, got it. Oh it yeah, now, I was gonna say Nate, that wasn't okay, the terminology okay. oh, we're using. Oh, Nate oh. Nate used that terminology. He put it in the in the field of play, so we had to use it. Uh, Brandon Zerk asks, is it the same super sportsman wings that are three by five? And no, they're not. They no. are, they're uh, a <laughs> lot much, much skinnier. Yes. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually looking it up right now to see the exact specs, but yes, they are. I said goofy wings as a big sportsman guy, but they're not the three, the three by fives. Aren't that goofy. They were just oh. the little, no, um, I still have mine for my feature win in 2019 hanging on my wall. So they ever make a return, I'm ready. <laughs> ready to go. Uh, you were putting on social media today when we were gearing up for this that you were going to do a giveaway to uh, people that are commenting in the chat. Can you give us a little bit more detail on that, what that giveaway looks like? Yeah, so I have a, two free T-shirts, um, a $2 off coupon for Lincoln, um, a Jersey Mike's coupon for Hanover. Yes, I do remember, Nate. Um <laughs> A, a decal, a tote bag, and um, a can koozie. So that will be all in the fan package for it's a hell of a package. Yeah. So I'll give that away. Um, Tyler Koenig's writing all the names down for me um, with who um, act like was, yeah, oh my God, who was <laughs> participating in the comments. So I will go home, put those all like a uh, wheel spinner in it on the computer and then um i'll post the the winner when i get home because i'm actually at pat sterner's house but she will not get on here and talk i just did this because she, <laughs> she don't have facebook so i said I'm here to do this with her uh, so i i came from softball practice right to here um because i'm a coach for those that don't know for gettysburg um high school so i came here and then after i leave here i'll go home and i'll do the drawing on the Ashley Capetta Racing uh, Facebook. And then you can pick that up in the fan zone um, on Saturday at Lincoln. If you can't make it, let me know and we'll make arrangements. <clears throat> well, the comments are getting a little out of control here. Why does Nate way. wear women's stockings to racing? We don't ask anything um, about Nate. Nate's out of control. Anything um, with Nate. Oh, I will say, I just want to slide real quick. Super Sports and Wing is a 16 square foot Dish. It's it's weird. It's, there's a lot of things I'm not going to read, but hey, really you're different. Dawn said hi. She said, "Come on, Dee Dee." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Nope, I ain't getting one there." <laughs> <laughs> um, Brandon Zerk did did ask, "What series did you start your racing career in?" Three fifty eight. If you yeah. ask my grandmother, who's no longer here, she would tell you the lawnmower in her backyard. Same, same. <laughs> uh, Santos asks, I ever thought of building motors with Rob? I would love to do that with my uncle. Um, I, My cousin helps him right now, but I I would disassemble. I would not assemble. Like I, That's a whole level of trust that I just don't have confidence in to do. Um, but I have told him before I'd gladly come down and clean parts for him and stuff like that but he's stubborn just like the rest of us capettas and <laughs> when you're he's really busy he just doesn't ask for help but yes i would love to do that with my uncle brad's asking how much else can you get your hands into very busy well, i start 
I start school in the fall, so of course, just... of course, she's of course she has more plans. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, let's, let's go going right now. Always busy. I saw you. I mean, what well, you're even the sun was going up yesterday, and you're loading up at the flea market, Williams Grove, having your shop up. You you are a busy person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. An hour and a half of sleep yesterday, or not even a full hour and a half. And I went up yesterday, and um, it was worth it though. I had a good day. Just tired today, but today, hopefully I'll sleep. Uh, Aunt Bay, Aunt Bay asked, uh, who do you like distance racing with? If we recall, I believe it was Chris Frank because he's always in the damn way in her line. I believe was the answer to that question. But um, actually sense. runs the top now. So. It makes sense. Chris Frank, bug man in the way. He's a bug. He's in my way yesterday. <laughs> well, <laughs> since Chris moved on to the 410 zipper at, you know, Williams Grove, um, which honestly, I think Chris has done a great job in the four tens um, yes. here. So happy for his success with that. Um, I don't know. There's nobody that really comes to mind. I guess anybody that just kind of, way. <laughs> I wouldn't say in the way, but if they drive like an ass, um, I get frustrated. Fair enough. <laughs> Um, uh, Tyler asked if given the opportunity outside of sprint cars, is there any kind of car you'd want to drive, like a modified, late model, UMP modified, etc.? Why did Tyler only throw in like you know, fender transgender cars there? Come on, man, I this guy, why. Why like a silver crown car, you know, like a real, yeah, car, you know? I feel like he knows the answer too. He just <laughs> he just knows put, the answer and he knows that he's one of the late model, a late model, mm -hmm. super late model. Uh, All late models. Nah, I would say like a 358 late model, but super would be cool. But I'd be okay with like a 358. Limiteds are cool too. We got to see a little bit of yeah. the amp apps. Um, <laughs> Chris Frank is the only car I'm on that can make a 410 feature, says Nate. I, Listen, I'm, we sorry. I'm sorry, Billy. I'm sorry, Billy. <laughs> you caught us straight here. Feeling. Right, Kyle freaking Keen made a 410 feature. Everybody else that, that we were on, myself or our podcast, didn't make the races again, you know? So, didn't make the egg. We, we understand, Nate. We feel the pain, buddy. We feel the pain, my friend. Well, I don't know why we would just drink Ashley like that. That's that's kind of messed up, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ashley. I guess, okay. I guess your days got a little easier. I don't know. Oh. That's what Jeremy, Jeremy math. <laughs> hey, it's, it's already bad enough. I... I told Pat sitting here earlier, I said, you know, I would love to win Saturday. Nothing. I mean, that would be excellent because that's my anniversary from when I started racing in general. Um, and my set, my first career win was her birthday. And the second career win was the Weldon Sterner. So put those two together um, and that'd be great. But the biggest thing, like I told her, is making sure we have a successful night of racing um, as long as I make the show, roll in the box, you know, I'll be happy. But, I, of course, I really want to win. But just having the show go around and everybody have a good night is what is the biggest win for us for that night. Absolutely. Well, let's. do you want to get into who is all helping you put this all together? I know you kind of already said it, but kind of just like a whole wrap up of what to expect this Saturday and who's helping you do it. Well, so this Saturday, um, like I said, the fan zone, four to five, um, we meet, you can meet the different drivers that whoever comes um, early for that, um, Van May, Chuck Reiner will be in there signing autographs. Um, Van May plans to bring his car um, that he restored in his Corvette Saturday and putting that on display. Um, I don't know exactly. We didn't really discuss fully yet where he's going to display it. Um, last we talked was in Victory Lane, um, like right where the Victory Lane sign is. Um, so whoever wins can get their picture, you know, with his car and, you know, their car. Um, we have the T-shirt toss, the football toss, the cornhole tournament with uh, Chuck's Auto Parts Solutions. Um we have free scooters that we're giving away at our trailer for the fan zone that night. Um, the $2 off coupon at mine and Chad's trailer. Um, first hundred fans at each trailer. And then um, 
of course, I couldn't have done this race without Pat. And, you know, of course, her asking me to help her do this has been huge. I told her to kind of just sit back and uh, <laughs> relax this year because, you know, she's done this race with her family and sponsors for 19 years without a lot of help. Um, so I told her if, you know, she wanted me to help her with this to just uh, kind of sit back this year because, you know, it, it's a lot for her, you know, to have a big race like this, you know, something that went from 6,900 to 20,000. Um, she's probably gained a couple gray hairs <laughs> from all this. And, uh, you know, it's been great working with Pat and Chuck Reinert from our presenting sponsor, uh, Chuck's Auto Parts Solution. Um, I would like to go through a list, though, of all the sponsors that helped because without these people, um, it definitely wouldn't be possible. And um, I definitely want to thank Jerry and Emily a lot for their help um, at the track. You know, several meetings. Emily and I spent many times on the phone with different things. Um, so I would, you know, like to go over the list then at the end of this and just say, I mean, there's a lot of people that helped us with the lap sponsorship, which has been huge for both classes. Um, and companies that I don't think ever sponsored a race before came on board with this. So I just feel like those people deserve the recognition. Uh, one question here from Renee. Um, is it going to be on Flow Racing? And Tyler says it is. Yes. Yes. Okay. I did yeah, not know. That. Last I knew it was. Yes. So it'll be on Flow Racing if you cannot make it for some reason. But that should be no excuse. It should be getting out to the track. Get there. Support this event. It's going to be good. I mean, honestly, you know, I know we were talking about a little bit about price before, you know, $30 to get in and everything. But for everything else that goes with it, it rival And for the amount of money it's paying out for all, both divisions, it rivals something like an outlaw race or a high limit race, I think, in my opinion, and the value that the fan is getting because you're going to see great racing action. Both divisions, you get, you know, giveaways. You get to go into the pits, you know, all that. There's so much to do. A lot of the stuff surrounding it, I think it's it's an extremely great value. So should definitely get there. Um, you know, don't don't sit at home at flow if if, if you could help it. You know, My I heard it's going to be black, I heard it's going to be blacked out in a 50 mile radius of uh, the racetrack. So if you're within 50 miles, you're going to just have to go to the racetrack. So <laughs> sorry about your luck. <laughs> what not, he said. Not for me. Um, definitely come and support this race for Pat because I'm pretty sure Pat is the longest standing race held at Lincoln Speedway. Um, so to do this for 20 years yeah. plus, you know, you know, it'll be, well, this year will be 21 if we definitely get both shows through this year. Um, so come out and support those type of people that put on these races um, cause you can't rely on just Lincoln Speedway and, you know, local companies to do this, to have a memorial race last this long, get out and support, you know, Pat and her family. I mean, for them to do this, this long, I mean, her family is great people. Um, they're very excited about this race as well. Um, I know some of her family's in here watching. So if, if you don't like me and don't want to support the race because of me support for these people here, because They've put a lot of time into this for the last 20 years. Absolutely. This, is, this is always one of my favorite races of the year. Um, I've been to it probably many of those 20 have to be. Um, they always play the ride you know, during the event. Um, and if anyone from Lincoln Speedway is listening, I don't give a shit how late this weekend goes. We got to get this event in. I, I will not complain how long you keep me there. If there's weather-related issues, <laughs> I want to watch this event. I want this to go all. Get this shit in. Okay, that's all I got. There you go. Troy said hey, uh, he'll be watching online. That's unacceptable, Troy. You should have your flight booked already, and you should be <laughs> in America, you know, Saturday somehow, morning going right to Lincoln Speedway. Somehow faster than James McFadden could do it. Yeah, you do you, <laughs> Troy, man. Let's go. <laughs> hey, and if I win this race, I'll tell you what, right now, I will be doing something special for the fans. Um, I don't know what, but it'll be something special if we can seal the deal on, you know, my anniversary and this, this race. But if not, like I said, we'll be happy either way, as long as, you know, everything goes okay with the race. Cause that's, 
<laughs> what Pat and I will be stressing about the rest of the week. <laughs> Ashley, if you win this race, Jimmy and I are going to burn the whole place down. We're burning um, it down. Brett, well, Brett, Perigo you, won't, Brett Perigo won't win a race, so if you do it, we'll burn it down for you. I think if Ashley wins, you do what Joey Mann just said right there. Chris and Jimmy have to get nasty Nate tramp stamps um, if Ashley oh, wins this did. race. Nobody is. <laughs> My mom said, you win, you can take me to dinner. Heck, I'm taking the whole race team, the whole the promotional shoeies. team from the Sterner race. We're all going to dinner. And you know what? We win. I'll be calling my sponsor at Jersey Mike's and saying, hey, I need a bunch of subs for like the following week because I have fans a time to Jersey Mike's subs <laughs> to celebrate. <laughs> and I'm actually on you know, Jay-Z's idea. Jimmy yesterday said he would get a nasty Nate neck tattoo. Ashley, you I'm win. I will I will match the, Jimmy's the temporary neck tattoo. tattoos. Nope. That they real, have, buddy. We're getting, not a real we're one. Going down, we're going down <laughs> to uh I would I would do a nasty <laughs> Nate temporary tattoo right if on Ashley neck. wins. I would do it. I would it in. temporary as well. All right, we're in. Ashley, you guys gotta win now. Hey, I like Aunt Bay's <laughs> idea too of shooties. I'll call Jersey Mike's and tell my sponsor, hey, you just need to open the store. Um, <laughs> buy, uh, like a thousand bucks in subs. <laughs> to, and we're having a heck of a party at Lincoln. So subs, Nate, nasty Nate tattoos and uh, shoeies. What a party, yes. man. Hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> we should do that regardless of who wins. we, we should, should do that anyway. It sounds like a lot I'll of fun. Be... <laughs> I'm gonna not commit to that, but <laughs> as long as it's on flow, it has to be on flow. As long as everyone in the world can see it, that's not there. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. That's what I needed to know. Yeah, Jimmy, we're gonna go to drop the ink that night. Don't worry about it. It's no, temporary. No, no, no. I want just a temporary one. I'm not. I don't have we're any go, tattoos. We're gonna go. You bitch. I don't plan on it. <laughs> and listen, if I am gonna, sorry, if I am gonna get a, ta a real tattoo, I don't know if I'm gonna do a nasty neat one. It's on the list. I don't know if it's number one on the list. Tim said no flea market Sunday. You're probably right. If we win, probably no flea market. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be a flea market. We'll just help you load it all there and just keep partying. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, everybody's just going to follow us to the flea market. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. Sold. So anything else you want to hit on before we let you go here? We're going on almost an hour here. So Yeah, I'm just going to do all the sponsors real quick, so bear with me because there is a lot of people that supported. Um, obviously, presenting sponsor, Chuck's Auto Parts Solution, Chuck Reinert. Um, he's been a huge help to this race and his promotional team as well. Mike's Towing and Recovery, Rip's Crab Shack of Littlestown, Pat's Family, um, Let's Outlet, a r Gunworks, Indy Race Parts, Silent Salute Foundation, a &K Flooring and Home, The Racing Trading Post, Kathy and Don Kimmy, a tribute to Steve Smith. Somebody did a, a lap in uh, tribute to Steve. Nature's Best Wildlife Artistry, Brielle Stern Racing, Robbie's Oil Service, Randy's Electrical, Boyer Construction, 717 Posse Gang, ACR and Team, Altoff Property Management, Golf Cart Services, Livingston Lawn Care, Snellbecker Electric, H&H &H General Excavating, Brenneman Painting, GPS, Kathy Karch and Daphner, Yesteryear Antique Center, Iron Horse Trains, MB and Son Incorporated, Dean's Auto Plaza, Credit Connection, Factory Emlet Powder Coating, Capital Renegade, LM Tire and Wheel, CNO Distributors, Van May, Dave at DL George, Gettysburg Trading Post, Conalaga Ready Mix, Shiloh Paving, Glenville Station Pub and Grub, Karma Industrial, Jay Z Construction, Felch's Window Tent, Eichelberger Racing, Randy Wade Racing, Shorty's Funnel Cakes, Kim Burton, Iron Valley Real Estate, Tyler Koenig, Burners, Bruner's Service Center, Fletcher Farms, Posse Land Apparel, Beer Hill Gang, Nicole Signor Creative, Total Identity Solutions, TNS Customized Electrical Services, Ayrton Jennington, Snyder's Pretzels of Hanover. In memory of the following people for laps, um, Jim Slippery Snyder, Mike Miller, Joanne Lehman, Roy Kimmy Jr., Suzanne Morrison, Shirley Miranda, Mama's Pizza of Wellsville, Stone Cyphers and Sons Roll Off Dumpsters, Melanie and Todd Fritz, Cody Hartlob Racing, Kevin and Stacy Hartlob, and Hartlob's Furniture, and Countryside Auto Sales as well. So that is all the sponsors that helped make this race go round. And that sounds like well over 50. Like that's incredible. Yeah. It, there's everybody a lot of that's just people. coming together to put this together. It's great. 
33 lap sponsors for the 410s and 20 for the 358. So awesome. um, it's great to have so much support. I'm very grateful for all their help. Um, just get your asses in the stands this weekend. Um, right. Absolutely. I don't care what it takes. Um, I know we're uh, our sponsor, Snellbecker Electric. There's also going to be a um, giveaway for passes and reserve seats for free um, for general mission Saturday. So I will be doing that giveaway tomorrow. That's right, right though. If you can't get there, keep track of all this. There's so much stuff. I it's hard to keep track of everything you've gone and done, and that's going to be happening. I listen. I hope there's a backup announcer Saturday that can announce all the things happening because Wayne is going to run out of breath because <laughs> there, there's so much shit you're giving away and doing. He's going to forget. Not going to, you know, it, you're going to need a backup. So hopefully, uh, um, hopefully like there. And I'll just start rambling. Also, there you go. There you go. That's right. Somebody did ask. You have it all memorized for Victory Lane, so there's that. So you should probably practice your speech in the mirror. I'll put um, this in my pocket. <laughs> race fans, if you if you can't be at the racetrack, at the very least you can do is share the promotional stuff that Lincoln Speedway is doing, that Ashley's doing, that Flow Racing will be doing. At the very least, you can share that to your social medias to help support, get eyeballs on this race somehow, some way. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up. The video that they put together, whether that's your team, Lincoln's team, that is tremendous. That's one of the better, be, one of the best promotional type videos I've seen from Lincoln or, or any track elsewhere recently. If, have you, Jimmy, Chris, have you guys seen this video? I well, Gigas done. did a very oh, good job on that video. Yeah, really, really cool. Love the promotion on it. Love what it what it's what it's doing. If you have not seen that video yet, where can we find it? Link, uh, Lincoln Speedway social media, right? I think he's been putting it out. Yeah. So yep. the Lincoln, Lincoln Speedway social media stuff, um, man, what a cool video. I, I watched that the other day. I was like, this is what I'm talking about. I love that stuff. So well done for the team, everybody involved. Yes, everybody did a good job with everything. Well, we're going to let you go. We thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for everybody that tuned in, that, you know, that was following Ashley. Uh, make sure to check out her social media for the giveaway and get your ass there on Saturday. No excuses. No nothing. You know, even you, Troy, you know, sorry, get a even flight, you, get to America now. <laughs> Just no excuse. So, But if you can't, share it. Make this event sound positive because, yeah. as she alluded to, there is another one in September. That she's a part of. So, what happens now helps in September. So, absolutely. Let's do it. As Thank a team, you all of us are a team. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and um, thank you, everyone, for the support. And uh, if you come in the fan zone Saturday, make sure you stop by. Um, if you can't make the fan zone, because I know some people do work Saturdays, we'll be in the pits um, at the end of the night. Um, we always hang out after the races, so that's a rule of thumb for me to hang out for a while. Awesome. Hell yeah. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. Get there Saturday. We're going to let you go. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And the drawing, like I said, when I I have about a 25-minute drive home, and then um, I'll do the – after Tyler gives me all the names, I'll do that wheel on my Facebook page for the giveaway um, for Saturday. Sounds great. Thank you guys thank again. You. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. You too. Actually, Tyler, yes, Aunt we can Bay, have that I'll be there on Saturday. That's my plan. Tyler, if we get that name it. and we're still live, give us that name so we can announce it here because I'm going to yeah. guess we're still live. Yes, we probably will still be live. Just going just gonna to guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely get yeah, there and there and there and there and you know, with, with, her, with her last year. Last year. And, year. and, and tough luck. And tough luck. Um, um, yeah, just yeah, – yeah. just. I'm not taught. I didn't I'm want to bring up the weather, weather, you know, but it's a possibility. You know, possibility. You want to make sure you have your teeth crossed, eyes dotted. Tyler will definitely let us know that name. Um, um, but yeah, but yeah, that's this upcoming that's Saturday. Saturday. Let's talk about this past about this weekend past here in racing. It's Jeremy. Um, um, right you want to start with that? Is it Jeremy? What about it? I don't know. I just hear. What? Is it going again? It's really bad. It's it's terrible. <laughs> your 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 problem. <laughs> it's your problem.
It's usually me, but you're the problem here. <laughs> this time, I think. I don't hear it now. So, yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. I think How, How's this? So, Is this any better? That's much better. All right. Shitty quality, but it's another uh, another audio source, whatever. Never well, had it's, it's not... It's not playing back. The problem is really when we're talking, yeah. your speakers are blowing up our ears. It's, it's not me echoing. It's it's playing through speakers. We Never mind. We, the, got we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. I know uh, audio issues is like a, a common theme for us because I know we had a lot of problems yesterday thanks to the wind. Um, let's start with BAPS. Let's start there. Um, BAPS yesterday. Huge car count. Beautiful day. I am sunburned. I can't tell if I'm sunburned or... Or yes. windburn or both. Yes. But I'm definitely sunburned. I was feeling it today. You were um, both of those things. <laughs> um, it was a great day just to be out at the track. Over 100 cars. 42? Or was it 43? 40, 42, 410s. 42, 410s. 42, 410s. And then 29, 29 wingless, wingless sports and 28 and light then, models. Yes. Something like that. Like incredible car counts. So we were trying to do our pit walk, you know, kind of like we did a couple weeks ago there. And we started at the other end this time. And it was hard to do because, one, they were still trying to park the cars yeah. that were still coming yeah. in. So, um, right. And then keep the in wind mind, was pretty gnarly. Keep in so mind. It was, it was getting into the microphones and everything. So we apologize about that. We'll, you know, not too much we can do, but we'll keep working on it and trying to get better there. Babs has, has that new pit area. So it was a little of a mess. It was a little mess. It's the first time I think they had three division show to that level, right? They could, obviously their weekly shows yeah. are pretty good. Um, it's Did a they get forty three four tens for the Outlaw show last year? Uh, it was close to right that. About there. It was in the mid low right. to mid forties. That's incredible. So, so yeah. forty three four tens, a lot of guys, a lot of wingless sportsmen there. Twenty nine, like you said, and a lot of guys that were out of place. Like I know there's reserve spots there for the weekly guys. And they, some of those were really hard set on being in those spots. And some of them just kind of got told that – I don't know if they got told. They just kind of went to wherever they could find a spot. Um, so great for BAPS. They got something to look back on. And it's a small issue at the end of the day. The pit. Yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating. I know, like, Tony was directing traffic. It's frustrating. But it's, not, it's, a, it's a good problem to have, right, when you have 8 million cars showing up. Um, but, yeah, a little chaos in the pits. You had, you had trucks moving in. Every, race cars everywhere scattered. You had random sports music, like sprint cars, late models scattered around. It was it was chaos, right? Like it was just, that's growing pains for a new pit area. So yeah, I mean it. There was definitely room for everybody, which is good. Um, but as we did our pit walk, we you know I, again thank you guys for tuning in. Randy says keep doing the pit walk videos. We're gonna keep trying to do stuff like that. Um, we got to catch up with Devin Borden, who won Saturday night. He he. Uh, talk to us for a few minutes um who else did we talk to i think we i mean it was it was getting chaotic there towards the end where it was just like we kept seeing people we're trying to talk to people we talked to dakota coon as we were talking we were locked out uh, looking at jordan gibbler's fresh new ride Mint. and a new sponsor and sponsor. New sponsor. victor victor enterprises is that correct i saw um, the post today looked fantastic and uh it was just you know we're trying to get everybody out all, all that we could um but it was, like I said, it was getting chaotic between the wind, trying to get people in and out there, whatever. Then we get to the racing, and, you know, it was kind of late evening or mid-afternoon. It was 80 degrees. It was windy. It did get pretty dry slick pretty quick. Um, but I don't think that was a problem, personally. I don't know. I don't know if it – I I mean, I watched no, from I, the grandstands. I don't know if it got really rubbered down that much. I mean, I, I know that they were pretty – Locked down on the not. I won't even say locked down on the bottom, but it was definitely bottom dominant for most of the races. But you could still pass. Um, there was a lot of actually really fun racing in the heat races, but it didn't seem like it rubbered down. It was just slick and dry, and right. I thought that I I'm fine with that personally. Right. It wasn't rubber down, from my opinion. It was just like no. the wing guys all hit the bottom. Like you do there, you could do different things. When the wingless guys came out, they could kind of move around, but you know the, the groove is going to be where it is, right? And that feature, you know, skipping ahead a little bit, that feature kind of proved the track was fine. Yeah. It's just you have to go where they're fast at right now. It wasn't quite wide enough yet. You had you had a few guys going up into the fluff, just absolutely smoke screening the field. But <laughs> it's cool as hell. But it's like, is it fast? No. But it's cool as hell. Yeah. You know, listen, I, they got started a little bit late because they put so much water on the track. You know, it was hard to get the top layer off. 
they knew that, that they knew what they had with the wind and the sun. They were trying everything in their damn power to not get it slick, dry, rubbered up. It, not much you can do, right? They no, they tried like hell, and it was really wet. It took the sportsmen, that first group of super sportsmen that came out, or excuse me, the wingless sportsmen, they let them run around, and they were real slow, and they stopped them. They ran them again. You know, it took them a long time to get through hot laps. By the time we got the heats, the, the what was there was gone moisture-wise. They knew weather was coming. They got a lot of cars. We got a B-main in every division. As they were starting to roll one heat off the track, off the track, and one heat on the track, they'd run a lane of water around the top. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough to race there yet, but they were preparing and going, I'm going to try to do a lesser intermission. Listen, I, I give them a little bit of kudos for like, hey, we they tried to prepare, mm -hmm. knowing weather was coming, knowing there's a lot of cars, knowing there was wind and sun. Then they tried to be proactive about the track prep. It started to take a little bit in the 410 B main, but they knew if they were going to have a racetrack for the A main, they had to do something. Yeah. Everybody on the planet knew weather was coming. It wasn't a surprise, themselves included, but we got to see a hell of a 410 feature. I don't love that they're not weathermen. They're racetrack people. They're not weather people, and they couldn't have known it was going to break up. I thought we were done. The way it was looking on the radar, it did not break up until it rained already, and it broke up. So... It's a Sunday night. It's late. Yeah. They make, they're going to make up these races. It'll be fine. I understand. I would have rather have been there late and watched all these races too. But listen, right. no. nobody, I'm not a weatherman. I don't care. I can have a radar live, but it doesn't mean I know what I'm looking at. They're racetrack people. They're not weather people. This isn't NASCAR where they got people on standby learning how to read the weather. Right. They got a full they... in, and it was outstanding again at BAPS. I think they tra tra prepped the track perfect. I think they put a good amount of water in in the beginning. It held pro pretty much all day. They did what they can in between. You know, not much you can do. You know, the weather's coming. You know, did we need as long of an intermission as we had? That's debatable. But either way, you're probably still only getting the 410 feature in regardless. Right. You're still there till I, the 410 feature didn't end till after 830. Right. It was a little bit after 830. Around so, there, I think you're going to get people leaving anyway. It's, sorry, you know, it, oh, it's hey. Sunday night. You know, people are it's just going to leave anyway. It's a 410 show. It's what it is, right? Like, yeah. I know we're, we're connected to the wingless because of Brett Perigo, and obviously I'm connected to the wingless because of Sportsman. But yeah, it's a 410 show. End of the day, they got yeah. in what they needed to get in. Limited mm -hmm. lates are there, honestly, weekly. So to make up feature for them, it's not hard to reschedule. Now, some of those guys are going to lose it. It still sucks, right? It's not saying it's good it's just like it's a lot easier to reschedule those divisions than a 410 it, race they actually punted the the b main for the late models and where they were going to start all 28 of them right just i guess they're to still going to do that i don't know i didn't see anything yet about rescheduling the uh oh late models i think are actually this i think are, i think there's just saturday the 20th so there you I go i think it's either 20th or 27th limited late say something there 27th maybe i saw it early this morning so yeah. they're going to put it on that card that day. Wingless Sportsman announced late this afternoon, May 11th. Um, so BAPS has a features-only show. At the time, it was going to be Wing Sportsman, Limited Lay, something else up against Morgan Cup at Williams Grove. They've now added Wingless to that race and the makeup features that same night. So Wingless will have two features. They're going to do starting field from this outreach race, top 18, lock into that features-only race that night, and then some kind of qualifying event that we have not quite figured out yet to get the rest of the field uh, based on car count. So April 27th for the late models, May 11th for the wingless sportsmen. So, so it worked out. Pass Valley's off that night. Yeah. I know it's kind of rough for us because more Mount Laws, Morton Cup, Wingers Grove, but hey, life's a I, business. I, th I think BAPS did everything right yesterday that they could. You know, I don't think they expected over 100 cars. I don't right. think anybody expected over 40. I think we were no. talking, we were talking 30, 32, maybe 34. You know, kind of what their normal one is. They got, they, they got know, over 44 tens. That's the biggest car count of the season here in, in um, the area. So, and all that to me just shows me how good a BAPS is doing as yeah. a racetrack. Because it's not just four tens. Yes, that's huge, right? Mm -hmm. 43, four tens is huge. Um, they weren't – there wasn't any shitty 410s. They were all mid-pack or above level 410s, in my opinion. Right. Um, number nine, he's been learning a bunch. He was actually competitive yesterday, and I wanted to shout him out. I told you, Jimmy, I'm like, mm -hmm. usually he's been struggling the last two years. 
getting laps in. Not that he was a danger, they just getting laps. He actually ran well in his heat. Maybe that. So props to that, but they, they weren't shitty four tens. Uh wingless twenty nine. Um that's good. Limited yeah. lace, twenty eight deep. Like, let's go. I guess yeah. that's good for a sprint car limited TV event for a four ten event. That's what keeps racetracks going. These tracks that don't have a weekly quote unquote weekly four ten series, that's what you need to do. Promote yep. the other divisions. Get race fans there to watch the other divisions. Yeah, I, I was a little weary on the three division show on a Sunday just because it's a Sunday. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's good to have it's better to have a bigger car count than a smaller car count. Right. For sure. Um, um, and I do think like like I said, I think they did pretty much everything perfectly. Just maybe the intermission went too long. And a lot of like, trust me, <laughs> everybody in the grandstands was starting after the paint can thing. Everybody was getting antsy kind of like. Let's What's go. the big can thing about? What did I miss? Um, I missed they, it too. You know, so it was part of their fan giveaways, and it was fine. Oh. You know what I mean? Like it was part of their fan giveaways. They uh, basically kind of like the old World of Outlaw toolbox thing. Stand out, hold them up. Oh. Last person standing won a fifty-inch t- uh, flat screen TV. So, um, you know, all yeah, cool things, a, but cool just event. kind of cool event. kind of reading the uh, the room a little bit. Was it necessary Gordon. to go through all that track prep and stuff like that? I think people are just getting antsy because they knew it was coming. You look at the radar, you knew it was coming. But we end up seeing a banger of a 410 feature. And they almost they got one lap in of, uh, of the Sportsman feature. But let's talk about the 410 feature first. Danny Dietrich with the win. Uh, looking really good out there, man. This guy's on fire. Uh, That's all the day. Go ahead, but, Jimmy. I think you talked no, about no, no, the pit walk. 10 out of 11 races he's been in podiums. I know mm-hmm. you, we met, Jeremy, you mentioned the pit walk. It, I saw it today from Sherry's racing updates. 10 out of the 11 races he's entered podiums. And obviously the one other one being the Winners Grove where all hell went wrong for him. So <laughs> phenomenal job for Danny. Yeah. And I was a little, nothing to get, it was not even against Danny. It was Kyle Moody was leading that race. And I really, he's been doing so well this year, especially at BAPS, but just in general. He's really starting to get a little bit more consistency. We've talked about this on the show a couple weeks ago. Um, and it looked like he was going to get a win. Uh, and then it was about, what, six or seven lap, laps to go is when Danny got around him. Lap 11, Danny makes the move. And, yeah, and that's when Rick Lafferty's motor blows up. Yeah. But, um, yeah, <laughs> Kyle Moody looks stupid strong, stupid fast. Um, hate that he finishes second. But, I mean, if you're going to finish second, why not be – Probably the guy that's the hottest guy dominating in Central PA right, right, now, right, now, yeah. right now. Yeah, um, like, absolutely. Dylan Sisti with a great run in third. Freddie Raymer, fourth. Troy Wagaman. He was he was trading slide jobs with Mark Smith, and it, from like from like fourth back to like twelve, it was just slide job city for the last half of the race. Devin Borden coming from did he come from twentieth? He came from. Back there, yeah. Yeah, I believe he came from 20th because he just got the move in his heat race to just get that last transfer spot uh, at the line, I think. It was like the last lap. Uh, Mark Smith looked really good. He was up there. He started – did he start on – he didn't start on the pole. He started up there, though. He looked good. Lance Luis also started up there. He fell back. He was running third or fourth most of the time. He fell back after that last restart. Tyler Ross with a strong run, and Lucas Wolf looked good all night. So, absolutely – Great race. Jay Z, what'd you see from down in the taking pictures down there? Well, you know, you said about like from fourth to 12th, the sliders. Everybody in the top 10 I saw either got slid or threw a slider. And Danny, there were, I'm telling you, I have no less than three extremely close sliders that Danny was involved in, whether he got slid or he was sliding someone else. Uh, Sisney, you know, I got a slider with those two, and they both have the left front off the ground, sliding off a of two. Uh, Wagaman and Mark Smith, uh, Wag- uh, Mark Smith and Raymer, and I think Mark Smith may have been pissed off at Freddie after that race. He kind of <laughs> chased him down. Uh, there, I'm telling yeah, you, those yeah. guys were being, and, and not just Freddie. I'm just saying, ultra uber aggressive. And really, what happened? The bottom of the racetrack was slick. It was slick through the middle. The bottom was okay, but the the top was so fast that it created monster slider line. In one and two, and I, maybe there wasn't three and four as well. I know Danny took the lead with a slider in three and four, but like, man, those sliders were ultra aggressive, and you had to be in one and two, yeah. and it, it was entertaining for sure. 
Um, I lost track at one point who was running where because he got in a lot of traffic a little bit. I'm like, who's third and fourth and fifth? And I saw Lance and uh, Lance and Troy and Lance and Mark Smith. It, it was just a, huh. it was just a recycling of of guys sliding each other, and I was losing track of who was going where forward, who was going backwards. Dylan Sisney. Uh, Sisney was uh, um, actually. Moody took the lead from Sisney, and Moody threw a pretty short slider, and Sisney actually ran in the back of Moody off the of two, and I thought they were going to be big junk. I, I was like, oh, no. I was like leaning back from it. So, yeah, it was tremendous. It was awesome to watch. Uh, another good BAPS 410 feature. They just yeah. – they rarely disappoint. No, they, do, they don't miss. They um, don't miss. It, was, it was one of those things where it was like they were doing all that track prep, people were getting antsy, and then it's like you go and see that, and it's like, well, yeah. that's why. This is why That's you why come here. here. You know, this is why you come here is right here. But, um, I want to give probably my highlight of the night um, was uh, Kyle Keen, man. Make it his 4 four ten feature through the heat. Look good. You know, this was timed hot laps. So he had to start up there, um, you know, not just by random pill draw or anything. He was fast in, in hot laps, started up there, held his own. Finished fifth, got in there, got good laps against great competition. There's a lot of good cars. That I mean, the B main alone was a full feature. It was 23 cars or whatever. Uh, just I think it was whatever you know, like. And there was a lot of good cars in there uh, that had to come through the B main. Uh, Ryan Newton on your shirt, Kyle Reinhardt, the hell out of me. You know, oh. he ripped the freaking top around oh. everybody. Like everybody was trying to get low in that B main, and he showed that you can just go rip that top up there, and he ran away from everybody if you could hit that, you know, if you could keep the momentum going, and he did. It was I think he showed way. everybody where it was because, like, he was one yeah. of the first to go up there, and then by the end of that, there was just car after car after car ripping the top of one and two, and they were like, oh, there's some speed there. Reinhardt moved up. Strickler, Brett Strickler came out, started 20th, and that ended up 14th in feature and was ripping the top through one and two. He wasn't um, even supposed to start that B main either. Yeah, he was not going to go out there, right? And they fixed the problem. They're ready to go for next week. But, um, man, that B-Main was entertaining from my seat. And I moved to a different place for the B, thinking I was going to like, okay, I kind of know what's coming. I did not expect them to be ripping the top of one and two, but they found moisture and they found speed. So yep. that was before the track work, by the way. Yeah. As soon as they'd that sun went laying, down. They'd just been laying some water, just a run of water, just a run of water. And it ended up tremendous um, for, uh, for the B-Main there. So – um, I, you know, where I'm standing in the infield, I can't see everything. I was really focused in one and two. If three and four was anywhere as close, as good as one and two was, man, you guys saw a hell of a feature from the stand. So, oh yeah. if yeah, you, and, and I still will say this, if you can hear this podcast and you're listening to this, this show, and you're in Pennsylvania and you have not been to BAPS for a 410 show, again, not that I want to say don't go to the other ones, but if you have not been to BAPS for a 410 show, you're missing out. Yep. Get your ass to BAPS and watch a 410 show. It, it's it's I I would consider my home track. I'm the it's the closest track to me, and I grew up going there watching 410s. I was a Stevie Smith fan growing up. He's just a little bit older than I am. He was the kid when I was a kid, you know, kind of thing. And um, man, like that's just where we went on it was Thursday night or Sunday nights growing up. I don't even know. I'm sure it was a great parenting decision by my parents to have me out then on Thursday or Sunday nights. But that's where I grew up going, man, and and it never disappoints, you know. Awesome stuff. You get to see it again in two weeks, too. Not yeah. next not the coming Sunday, but next Sunday. They bring 410s back again. So, um, yeah. And then you got Outlaws coming in. Well, they don't come till June. No. Right? Yeah. Till Ju they're a little bit later in the year. Yeah. yeah. Lincoln's the first. Outlaw. Yeah. We're getting into, we're getting an Outlaw season, Morgan, or Morgan Cup, right? Here yeah. in May. So, um, right. Go ahead, we have Chris. a pass for that one. That's all. I just want to piss Jeremy off real quick. Anything else you want to add about that's yesterday? that's all. Yesterday? Um no, this day was great. Loved it. I couldn't find Brett Perigo. He was a little busy. But I talked to Carmen and Craig and all the other Perigos. They almost swept. Um They did. You know, we'll get we'll get more into this on Thursday on the rolling podcast. But uh yeah, Brett wins his heat. Craig wins his heat. It, breaks breaks my buddy Eric. Actually, he broke my heart. Eric actually didn't care. I was upset. Um Eric said that's fine. But, yeah, there was then, uh, there was multiple Dennis where either the win or the transfer spot was a drag race to the line out of four, and it was half a car length or less. 
and that was one of um, them. Sorry. The yeah. and, 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 and as I heard from a pair ago named Carmen, um, they would have swept had Denny just not messed up and let Dexter Aaron Zeller pass him. But <laughs> here we are. So not a, not a great day. Love. I love being at Babs. It's, it's growing yeah, into one of my favorites. Time. That was my third race at Babs, which is outpacing my native homeland of Williams Grove by a lot right now. So um, I love it. I love being at Babs. Very good. Um, yeah, I uh, do want to give a shout out to Brett Perigo, of course. He took his cojones. Took Can we just find out where he is first, just, though? And just drug him across everybody in that in that heat race. He went from fourth to first in one turn, basically. Uh it was wild. He went split cars three wide, went through down into turn three and slid for the lead. It was impressive. Um, Randy, he was there, there was, was a little extra motivated for some reason. I don't know why. Randy, there were so many Paragos there. It was wild. Like, yeah, there were three so Parago awesome. race cars. And, and then you see Carmen. Brett. Brett was missing, and there's still like so many Paragos. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> and we still couldn't find Brett. I saw Brett on a wheel at one time. I, I didn't know that saying. one Parago even existed. I didn't yeah, know who's this guy. Yeah, dude. Fast Uncle as fuck, ben. though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, hey, comment here, Mad Matt. Uh, Going to be interesting to see how Callum Williamson does in the trunk car. Listen, I wasn't sure why he hasn't raced yet, but we started thinking about it and figured that Linton Jeffrey wrecked all of the race cars. So we're thinking maybe they're out of race cars. I don't that's know. Maybe nice. you know more than we do. Uh, but no, I'm looking forward to that. I hope he does well there, um, you know, in that car and, you know, makes a name for himself over here in the States. I mean, I know the name, but there's probably a lot of people locally don't don't know this name. Uh, and hopefully, he, you know, makes himself a household name. Yeah, absolutely. Um, be interesting to see when he comes over and, and does in that car, whatever is left. Um, Will I see any of you three at Sealance Grove on Sunday? I will definitely be there. I don't miss Sealance Grove. No. Um, shit, hopefully the weather holds out. It's not this. Not good. this trip. I made them last year. This one, I'm. I think I'm gonna. I think I'll skip this one. This time. Not gonna lie, probably Team Jay Z here, but you never know. I'm full of surprises. So. Me too. Well, listen. anyway, don't listen to these naysayers. Get to Sealance Grove on Sunday. Oh, uh, oh it's gonna be a great time. Finish. He I said, "You never know." Sunday morning. Yes, you know, you see this beautiful <laughs> race car going up the highway to Steelers Grove. And and it depends how the rest of the weekend goes. If the weather right. doesn't cooperate Friday and or Saturday, you might see me in the beautiful town of Steelers Grove on Sunday. You just never know. Again, don't listen to these naysayers. Get there anyway. So Okay. Yes, go uh, to like- Steelers Grove. Support Steelers Grove. He's right. What are, what are they running? Is it just 410? Four, it's 410s, limited lates, and uh, road, road runners. runners. Which oh, usually nice. they get like 10 to 12 road runners. Yeah. Um, I feel like Troy Savage got confused. It's not Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. It's posse, 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 posse. posse, posse. Like, uh, we'll take that. Race. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway. We'll, we'll steal All that. Right. From you. So, BAPS, <laughs> Sunday, great time. They will be making up those sportsmen and late model features, like we said. Um, got to get the shrimp dinner. Yes, Tyler knows. You got to get the peanuts and you got to get the shrimp dinner at Sea on Shrimp dinner at a racetrack? Ugh. Absolutely. It's dude, like sushi dude. from a gas station. You just no can't way. do it. No, it's, That's it's, how you it's, miss a show on Monday, Jimmy. <laughs> no. Dude, you never, had, you never had the shrimp at Sealand's Grove, man? It's no. Good. I don't it's trust good. you at all. It's not like, it's not like, like raw shrimp. It's, it's deep fried shrimp. It's, I would it's, honestly be raw shrimp. They're big. Think like Long John Silver style, but way better. All right, you all right, so fair enough. I'll have to find it. We'll have to See, do a video that's about this sometime. Is there you go. We will do a video on this at some point. I think it's hell yeah. Jimmy's gonna eat it though. I'll film. I haven't had that in a while actually. Now I'm I'll now film. I'm craving it. Hmm. I'm gonna film. Anyway, anyway, let's get to Saturday. So unfortunately, Friday rained out. Um, yeah, they do got crinkle cut fries. You make okay, me hungry, man. Nobody cares for the crinkle Sorry. cut fries. Saturday, <laughs> uh, Friday, Friday <laughs> it was. We, first of all, preface, uh, we're in a chat with Brett Perigo, and Brett's like, don't look at the radar. We're racing the day. Talking about Williams Grove on Friday, I'm like, son, you're you're out of your mind because we were swimming Friday morning. No, anywhere you were. Day. Jimmy it, was it a rained. naysayer in a scenario. <laughs> <laughs> they end up canceling very early. Um, shout out to Williams Grove, doing it, doing the right thing. Um you know, the rain was gone by Friday night, but it was windy and it was still wet. You know, it the was property was probably not going to be a mess. good time if you're trying to, you know, 
park there and everything. So, and it was going to be cold. It was cold Friday night too. Um, that also Lincoln, it was a very weird turn of events. Lincoln canceled very early on. They canceled on Friday for Saturday. Right after um, Williams Grove. Yes. Right after Williams Grove did because of the winds and everything. And it was windy. Um, it was, be- it was gnarly on Saturday. Um, and BAPS also canceled on for Saturday, you know, geared up for Sunday just because of the way the weather was. We got like four straight days of rain and it was going to be wind. You know, we had wind advisories through Friday and Saturday. Um, but we still Port Royal still said we're going. The wind died down there a little bit earlier, maybe, I guess. But they went through with it on on Saturday. And I know Steph Showaker and her family, her clan there, they took their first trip to Port Royal this past weekend, and they saw a hell of a race. Uh, Devin Borden and Danny Dietrich, part two, second week in a row. What a what a feature. Devin Oh peak Port Royal Speedway. Yes, that is what but that that's the exact type of race we man I fucking love Port Royal. Like that's that's literally just what you say after after those type of races. The race was great. Uh whether you're there or you're watching it on flow, it was amazing. Um but got to give the credit a lot of credit to all the cars cuz it, it was chaotic with you got two leaders going through lap traffic, the lap traffic's holding their lines, you know, and you, shout out to Justin Whittle for stuffing himself in the wall and not you know, not, yeah, basically <laughs> to, to not take Devin out as Devin was trying to slide around uh, Danny with two to go uh, lap traffic playing a huge role. The track was wide. They did a great job of uh, reworking the track um, in between, you know, much like BAPS did yesterday, making it a great feature. So what'd you guys see uh, from your point of view? I, I think I watched that feature. Awesome race. I mean, Danny, you know, he's on fire, and he was. You can see the frustration come through. Like lap car got my way, but um, Devin Borden is a track champion, track champion from a year ago. There, um, absolute phenomenal driver, um, in general, but also obviously on the top. Uh, I think the cool part is we didn't hear about Wickerbills. You had a racy racetrack, you had lap traffic, you had two drivers that are good at their jobs, and. Very good at their jobs, and we don't have to worry about wicker bills. Um, I think that for what it's worth. Love the race. I love all of it. I mean, heartbreak for Danny. He's probably not that heartbroken. He'll get past it. Yeah. Good I for mean, Devin. No, we had no. We had Christian was with here a few weeks ago. Devin showed maturity. He didn't. Yes. Run the wall and wrecked the race car. He ran the wall, drove up to him, and let Danny know, hey. You got me last week. I got you today. And mm-hmm. that's what we need. It's not a rivalry, not in the spirit of like wrecking cars, but this is a little fun. For world, you know, we had that whole first rain out for the first three weeks. And then they have two back to back races that turn into bangers. You had, I saw a chat, and this one, I don't know that person's name, probably for the best. They said Devin Borden hasn't shown anything recency bias that we'll see what he does when the track's not hammered down. That person definitely didn't watch two weeks ago. When that track was very, or didn't out. watch any races at Port Royal last year either. <laughs> right. So that person, if you're watching, you know who you are, um, and you can live with that. But he's clearly shown growth. Um, rubber down race last week. He misses it. I don't even think he misses the bottom. Danny, Danny just, just a, charges it in harder. He did exactly the right move as a veteran would do to get around Devin. This time, Danny's the one that kind of got vulnerable with his own head, and Devin did the very veteran move to get around him. So mm-hmm. that's growth. Um, that track was not hammered down. No, it hasn't been hammered down in either two weeks. So whoever you are, and you know who you are in Facebook land, you're wrong. So direct. Uh, uh, and by the way, Devin came from twelfth to win that feature, or was it fourteenth? Right. Was it fourteenth or twelfth? Twelfth. He came 12th. from deep. Uh, Danny started like fifth, third or like, third, third or fifth. Yeah. I think he started somewhere in that uh, first in the inside row there early. Um, but yeah, yeah Devin that, had to drive through. Like he got up to the halfway through the feature. He got up to fifth and we're like, yo, he's coming. Like he's not just going to get up there, you know, and need a caution. Like he can, he could, he caught him before any caution was needed. You know what I mean? And then they got into lap traffic and, and it was, it was on from there. 
Brent Shu, there's never been a bad race in PA ever. Okay, you know this. That's, Go ahead, that's Jay Z. So, um, Port Royal was hammered down for Devin Borden. By the way, you're wrong. <laughs> If you run the line Devin Borden runs, look how hard he was running. You're telling me he was not hammered down? That's that's wrong. If you didn't run that line, you didn't run as hammered down. It was for Devin Borden. He was the fastest car in the track in traffic, passing cars to the lead. So that track was not that hammered track, down. Like, that track was not hammered down. Oh, you the the track is definitely wall not hammered down. The wall He's wall not wall. hammered down throwing like. We're not talking like Wayne's Grove. Crowd. You're starting to pull and you're hammered down. Yeah. Run your line. No, not he had to work that damn down. thing. Yeah. I, okay. I get what you're saying. And I get what you're saying. You're right with what you're saying. This I guy made it sound like. And I don't think there was any veteran moves from this. Last week, what Danny did to Devin was a veteran move. This week, what Devin did to Danny was I'm young and stupid and I'm going to just put it to the floor until I see a checker flag or Jesus, right? Danny was like, actually, like, hey, I'm racing lap cars, using his brain. He, he's he's not a guy that runs the wall. He admitted that. He doesn't want to go up there if he doesn't have to. This was not veteran by Devin Borden. This was I'm young and dumb, and I'm going to go do this damn I don't thing. I think anybody said veteran, though, either. We said progress. I mean, I did. I yeah. said. No, no, but I know what you're saying, and I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying that, like, his youthful exuberance, and I'm going to go rip the fence here, is helped him get there. What he did to Danny and through lap traffic and make that pass, that's some veteranness. Like, yeah, you can be the fastest car until it's time to like, hey, I got lap cars, Anna, and the leader in front of me who's the other second fastest car in the field. The way he handled that was very veteran. Yes, very veteran. Getting there, <laughs> I didn't oh. see a lot of veteran other than I'm just trying not to crash this damn thing and catch him in a hurry. That's what I saw. It and was, that's why sprint car racing is cool. It was badass. It was awesome. Awesome. I mean, yeah, he's he, he was – I think the big difference for me, though, was years past. There's we see a him good chance that he is wrecking it last year compared to he looked pretty in control. You know, he was throwing some moves, but he had to. If he, he was, was Logan Wagner esque in the back half of that five championship run where he's doing things like I don't know how he's doing that in the first place, but now he's doing it in control before. Before he would make those moves, kind of like a young Macri, where he sail off in the corner, and you're like, "Oh, I'm just gonna go, and I'm gonna hope that I catch this cushion and run off." This time it was more controlled. Like I'm gonna ease that cushion, I'm gonna do that thing to the cushion and drive the hell off, or I'm just gonna ride the fucking cushion and just go. Like definitely, in my opinion, more controlled, more car control, more disciplined while running the ragged edge. If that makes sense. What if you crashed it? Would you think it was a veteran race until he crashed it? No, then that's. Yeah. That's exactly one, what we're talking move, about, though. One false yeah. step, one move. It's not a veteran race. I mean, he's going to live and die by that. Whether you, if he succeeds, he's a veteran, a mature. No, move. if he doesn't, he's not. The point is, he didn't, and you could see he was. Time. He was. He was doing, seemingly, from what I was watching on Flow, was doing cautionary measures to make sure he didn't do that thing because he knew he was catching Danny and he was getting there and he had to pick a spot. Danny picked the middle because he was getting frustrated on those other guys, and that left the opportunity open. That's the veteran part of this. Years past, Devin's going to keep doing it, even if you can clearly see him go to the corner and see a car and say, hey, this isn't going to work. He's going to do it anyway. Devin wasn't doing that. He was almost setting himself up to be in position, so when Danny decided to go do something else, he was there. And that's yeah, kind of how my, it worked. In my view, if Danny ne if Danny doesn't leave the top, Devin doesn't win the race. No, nah, I still think he when, gets when Devin got is when, when Devin got to him with 10 to go – and they were both running the top. Devin tried to throw sliders. didn't work. He couldn't get to him close enough to throw a slider. Lap cars were in the way. When Danny moved down that one time and Devin had a run, it was over. Danny, When when Danny moved down, that gave Devin a shot. Devin doesn't really want right. to leave the top. He'll throw that slider. But if he has to throw that slider on, on a guy like Danny, even if Danny's not ripping the top like Devin, it's hard to make that work on a guy like Danny Dietrich. When Danny moved sure. down – it gave Devin that shot. I don't know if Devin wins that race if Danny moves off the wall, or if, or if Danny doesn't move off the wall. Nobody's Maybe. here to say, but man, I, I'm not taking anything away from Devin. That he did what he needed to do, and it was exactly. fantastic. I'm again, I'm not taking it away from him, but I, you know, and I think Danny said that I got impatient, and had to go, felt like I had to go right. do something. He doesn't leave the wall. I think Danny wins that race. Veteran driving is letting other guys make mistakes, it. and you capitalize on those mistakes. Sure. 
That's veteran driving. Yeah, I don't so know. At least Devin wasn't sending it and hoping it stuck. Yes, is he happy that Danny went down? Probably. Um, I don't know. Should yeah. be. A different Devin Borden. I, I wouldn't say I, I'm. I'm like in the between here, where I'm like I. I wouldn't say veteran is the right word, but definitely progression. Like I don't think. Right. Like, and that's kind of where it started. Like I, I think said, he probably junks it last year if he's in that same spot. He, Trying he to get Jones around him, getting there. He trucks and yeah. trying to even get there. Yeah. So, and, but I mean, he also won a shit ton of races at Port last year because right. he by passing right. a lot of cards as well. Right. So it's not like he's it's really capable of it. He's going to hit it sometimes. That's as yeah, simple right. as that. Yeah. But I, I was linking it into like last week's race too, where he showed that progression of not trying to do that and say, "Hey, tracks down here. Mm-hmm. We're going to go down here. We're going to do it right." That's all. Yep. No, I agree. I agree with you on that. Uh, other great runs. Steve Buckwalter was actually in the lead for a little bit of this race. Uh, in the beginning, he ran really well, stayed up there in third. Chase Steets went from, I think he went 14th to fourth. 14th. He did. went 12th to, to the win. Yeah. Chase right. Steets looked, is looking really good in that one car. Every almost car. as good as, I mean, I, he's almost already kind of where Logan was in that one car. Chase Steets is good I in think. everything. Dude, psh, man. Logan Wagner, by the way, in fifth, looks good in the 69K. Um, it is weird to see him, though, not quite like that was a pretty we all knew the top line was the 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 fast line. And he didn't seem to really go, at least from what I could see, go up there that often um, and maybe not as often as. But, you know, whatever. He's still great run, still probably feeling it out uh, and a great top five uh, against a good field. Lucas Wolf with another two back to back back to back top tens for Lucas Wolf looking really good. Um, Jake Carklin, again, I, t- I talked about him last week. He's another guy that keeps turning my head, you know, like he's especially at port, um, obviously at port, um, it'd be interesting to see what happens here this weekend because I'm sure he'll run port and Sealand Grove. Um, but looked great. Um, Freddie Raymer did make, make an appearance. He, uh, parked it really early. Like, I'm not sure what happened, but, uh, and AJ Flick made an appearance. All the way up from Western PA. He used to be a weekly guy at Port Royal, but the past couple of years he's stopped um, coming out every week because it's you know pretty far away. So good to see him out there on a nice but windy right. Saturday night. We're big AJ Flick fans. I think that's actually it's not his first race. It's definitely one of his first five and four races that AJ Flick's run this year. Um, yeah. Learn hasn't started up yet. Um, you know he's a monster out there. Big I think he made, a, fan. he made an appearance out at um, what was, what, was the dust, what was the dust race? Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, yeah, he was at Pittsburgh, yeah. So I've been high he, was out, he was out there that day. Uh, might have only been his second race of the year, second, third. I don't right. even think he's gotten a five. Yeah. Love AJ Flick. If you follow his pages, Mama Flick does a great job updating you on it. So do that. Absolutely. So that takes care of Saturday. Oh, uh, the super late model race was pretty good. Ross Robinson finally got his first Port Royal win. Good for him. Then they did the Australian Pursuit, which was pretty fun to watch. Um, and then I can't remember who won the limited late model race. but Devin Hart. Uh, late, Devin Hart. Uh, but late models there are always really fun. You got uh, Lucas Oil late models coming up the day after the Keith Coffin Classic here. Not next weekend. Not this upcoming weekend, but next weekend. So definitely April 27th. Yeah, April 27th is Keith Kaufman. That's 410s, USAC Wingless. East Coast, and Wingless Sportsman. And then Sunday is Lucas Oil Late Models, which I think I'm going to try to do. I'm definitely going to do the double, I think, that weekend if it's nice. Because I'd like to go and check out Lucas Oil. Uh, it, you know, I think that'll be – that they, they just race really well there. I'm not even a big late model guy, but going to Port Royal as much as I have is kind of turned changed my mind a little bit on it. You know, I'm not to say it's better in sprint car racing or anything, but – it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, uh, outlaws first. are high yeah. limit first. Let's let's just hit outlaws first, because um, I didn't really pay attention <laughs> to be honest with the outlaws that much. They raced at uh, I fifty five this weekend. Um, <clears throat> David Gravel won Friday night, uh, leading all forty laps. Uh, shout out Brock Sirfoss, the top ten. Noah Gas with the hard charger plus twelve. Um, Joe B. Miller with the top 10. Um, they had both on Friday night, both High Limit and World of Outlaws, both had 37. 40 cards, 41 cards at each. Out of, 
thought it was 37, but yeah, very right round there. 37, yeah. something like they had equal car counts at, at, at both and at, at full fields. So good to see. Uh, I-55 obviously is a is a crazy intense bull ring. Uh, David Gravel gets to win there, and then Saturday night, Donnie Shots. You know, he what do you say in victory lane? Take sometimes you just got to go take him to school. That's what he did. Uh, he went led the last 30 laps. Bill Baylog had a good start in this. He led the first 10 laps. Um, Austin hey. McCarl with the plus 12 hard charger. I, th- I think the interesting thing, real quick for me before anything, the Water Mountain Law Tour, haven't been following that close. They've been, what, they had nine nine new winners in nine races with Rico the other mm-hmm. week. Um, David Gravel, as of late, is starting to emerge as the David Gravel we thought was going to be doing. He's right. up there. He's there. But Donnie Schatz is not willing to just let him run. I mean, I mean, Cito, no, sure. But Donnie is just mashing him step for step. Um, Gio had the points lead a couple weeks ago. But you kind of see it. You kind of feel it. We're not quite in the Brad Sweet summer months where he just runs away. But David Gravel is sacking those podiums and top fives. It kind of feels like we're only oh so close to David Gravel breaking that point season wide open. But I don't know. Could be. What are you supposed Carson to do? Cito is still another guy you got to watch and Buddy Colfoyd. Buddy Colfoyd had, did he have two, two, two podiums? Two podiums. Two podiums. Yeah. He finished yeah, third there. on Saturday and second on Friday. And Carson Macedo was also there. Uh, he, can, they flip flopped. They flip flopped Friday and Saturday. So they both had podiums both nights. Right. So. I like it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's, I didn't. I, I pay attention to World of Outlaws, obviously. I mean, we're a podcast here, and I like the World of Outlaws. It's just the timing. The timing going didn't work on. Out. I, I'm not the biggest I-55 fan, to be honest. I think it's cool, but it's not really something that I'm like. That and Houston, those two tracks, for some reason, like they get a lot of this hype. And for me, it's just not my cup of tea. I just feel like it's too tight and too, I don't know. It's just not my brand. When you come from the land of half miles... We yeah. actually don't like those other tracks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know where he's come from. It's the high banked bull right. rings. Uh, yeah. The opposite RPM, which just high limit last night. Small track, but I thought that shit was gnarly. Like mm-hmm. that looked cool. It had character. You know, I, again, I agree with Jimmy here. Houston's an I-55. I watched it. It's, it's semi-entertaining, but it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why. It just, I don't know. I guess it's cool. But man, RPM, like Jacksonville Speedway in Illinois, RPM, yeah. those places to me, man, are like, they're just cool, badass little racetracks. Uh, I didn't even know anything about RPM, but watching that last night, that looked fun as hell. Yeah. Right. I caught the I caught that feature for RPM last night. I got home after Babs. I guess we'll go over you know, like Corey Day wins. Yeah, we'll talk. Uh, let's talk last night. All right. RPM. Corey Day with the win. Um, ripping the top. When nobody else was, it was a very gnarly track, like you said, um, not very high banked, but a lot of guys were really just trying to hook that bottom. And especially it seemed like out of four, we're trying to hit that. There was like almost like a mini curb that was kind of forming for them to try to grip on coming out of four low. Corey Day said, uh-uh, I'm just going up top and I'm <laughs> ripping around you at the end. Um, Kerry Madsen led most of this race, it seemed like, um, at least. Yeah, pretty much until Corey Day went around him. Jacob Allen with another great run. Um, Anthony Macri, we'll talk about him in a little bit. Great run as well. Brad Sweet with a top five. Um, just uh, Rico Aber had a pretty tough weekend. He uh, he he got into a late wreck there. Um, Hunter, Sher- Hunter Schurenberg had a pretty gnarly wreck. Um, they're all okay, but Casey Kane spun probably about four yeah. times all night. I think it's a you talk about bull rings, and I want to get your. I think I know your ideas on it. So Corey Day, California driver, similar to Larson, the Swedes, tight bull rings, right? And they're not high banks out in California, right? Um, but you think that helps a track like that? Jacob Allen, for whatever reason, him and Logan Stewart have always been good on the Outlaw Tour when they were out in California. What are your thoughts on that? Is it because it's they're used to that? tight bull ring style racing from being in California? 100%. Absolutely. We've seen it over the years. These tight bull rings, these California guys are the cream of the crop. They rise to the top. Whether there's an invader or a full-time guy, your Macedos, your your Larsons, your Ricos, that's what they're used to, right? That's why when 
you know, we if our guys go out and race a big half mile, our guys are pretty good at it, right? They have an idea on it. It's it's not any different. Um, but Corey Day is, and we talked about this last year a little bit. I know we have at times. He is a guy on my radar that could be the talent in this in the sprint car world if he sticks with it. He could be that next dude. And yeah. I've seen him, you know, punch above his weight, you know, experience and weight level, and he doesn't. He doesn't ever look really out of control like a young guy. He seems like he has it underneath of him. And I'm going to use this word because it really resonates with me, veteranness, in the way he races. He doesn't race like he's 18. He does not. And even on a bull ring like that, he never really looked out of control. Where you he would has the bull rings would do that. He's right. damn impressive. He's got a veteran crew around him with Jason Myers and those uh-huh. that team. Like he has people teach him away, right? He's a hell of a talent, hell of, hell of dedicated to it, right? Like he's gonna graduate online. He's working hard to get done with high school, but he's doing it the right way, right? I know for last couple of years it's him and Ryan Timms. Not that Ryan Timms doing it wrong, but like Ryan Timms has kind of struggled when he's come to PA or in other places. Corey Day has a cast of characters around him that have him set up to be whatever he wants to make this into. Yep. He came to Port Royal, dusted the field in his heat race, and was probably going to do pretty well in that feature until he got caught up in that, right. in that deal. For That was his first time to Port Royal, right? Like, I don't right. think he came last year. Like, like, he's, first time. <laughs> he's surrounded by a, a cast of characters that took down Donnie Shots as a World of Honor champion in Donnie's prime. Um, that's great. Corey Day has a talent to match that level of maturity that as an 18-year-old you wouldn't have, right? Mm-hmm. He surrounded himself on the right people to give him that maturity, that veteranness that, that Jeremy talks about. So, yeah, he's going to be a problem as long as he can stay with this. And when I say problem, it's a good problem. Like, he's a good problem for sprint car racing. Like, wherever he goes, whatever he decides to do, he's going to make your series, your track, better. Absolutely. Kyle Larson said the same thing as uh, pointed out here by some people in the chat here. Kyle Larson's another guy who, you know, when you get that co-sign, you know, right. you know, you're that you're the real deal. And he's not buckling under pressure. Look at what he did. Just, just went yeah, out. He's and, just saying, hey, do my thing. Yeah. Hey, but, so, Right. Real quick, though, you said Kyle Larson. That's the guy that makes your division streaming service track better mm-hmm. when he yep. shows up. Corey Day is that guy. Now, yeah. he, that guy. Uh, Randy Cop asked, how is Jason Miles connected? Myers connected to Corey Day. I want to say he's is he his uncle? I don't. I'm not exactly sure on that. I know that it's his car though. That's his car. It's uh, Jason Myers' team, right? I don't Jason. know if he's if he's related or something like that. But it's his team. I could have swore he was maybe related somehow, but I'm maybe not sure. Maybe related, something like that. Yeah, I, I saw the video once, but it's Jason Myers' team, right? Yeah. So, um That's how. Or it's just he just found him and yeah, he's driver I don't know. coach maybe. Yeah. Like, uh, something like that. Tyler, Tyler's going to come in and tell us how we're wrong. But Yeah, somebody will tell um, me that I'm completely off base. But it is his car. It's his team. And he's been kind of taking Corey under his wing here the past year and a half, two years, and has been bringing him up. And, and everything I've seen from already? Corey, though, everything I've seen from Corey, though, he's very receptive to criticisms um, and things that could help him build better, which is key for a young racer. Some of these guys like, hey, I know how to drive. Like, no, you don't. Like, no, he's... Corey's uncle, look at that. I, I was on. Finally, See, finally, Jimmy was right about something. something. See? Thank you, Tyler. Um, Saturday night. Saturday night. This race was pretty cool. Anthony Macri with the win. It, uh, they were going back and forth, though, between Brent Marks, uh, Brad Sweet, Tyler Courtney, and Anthony Macri. The lead changed quite a few times. Um, but Anthony Macri comes out victorious towards in the end. Uh, getting around Tyler Courtney, it's great to see. Pennsylvania being represented down in Texas. Uh, Brent with a good one run, and then obviously Macri with the win. Um, just and you know this was pr- this was a pretty cool. It was pretty cool track. It, this is at Texas Motor Speedway. Um, you know, and with NASCAR running, you know, it's right there. So like, if you go camping for the weekend, like you had, a, I think you had a lot of new fans there. The person that won the um, that did the dice roll. Never right. been to a dirt race. He's just like, I'm here, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's what, I that's what he exactly said. I'm here. I'm just here. That, man. That's the exact advantage that with Kyle Larson running this series and partnering it, 
it with NASCAR a little bit has the advantage of, um, you know, and it, it really, I mean, we've seen it before, but you know, this was a good example of, Hey, we're do we're there NASCAR weekend right after your Xfinity race, you know, Right, you come have on photo over to the back finish and, cu- and, cu- and come, yeah, photo finish, crazy like, photo finish. The hell, the hell of luck here. You have a photo finish, zero zero two thousandths of a second separate Sam Meyer and uh, Ryan Sieg, and then you're like, hey, let's go watch the sprint car because they're yeah, badass. Let's go, watch so let's awesome. go do that. <laughs> yeah, and you go, you go, you know, not only do you have Kyle Larson, but you also had Ricky Stenhouse and Chase Briscoe also running. Right. Um, you know, and it's like, hey, there's names that they know and then they're learning whole, oh casey kane's by the way there by the way if you're a nascar fan you know what i mean and right. it, you know and then you start that's how you get people and, into this stuff yeah I, this, tony did it with the all stars you know and and kyle's continuing and, that with this series as it they, moves on they had tim duggar there right after the show yeah he, did right? a, he did a post so you have a you concert. have a post race concert after the high limit race from a guy that's pretty big country music that's been at all the NASCAR shows, random SMI events throughout the year. It's like, dude, marketing side, spot on. Yeah. Then you have a and racetrack a tra- that we had. It's a, it's so SMI built these tracks as we were talking about it. You know, you have Charlotte, which obviously is where the World Finals are at. But I don't think like Texas has not been very used, and they used to go to Las Vegas, but I think for reasons because of Let's conditions. See. It's not the best for their track, <laughs> <laughs> but this track it, it it was fun. It was flat. Um, it was a little it was a little cowboy up, especially out of two. But it, it made perfect, for though. really good it racing. Made, right, spot on fun. Like you, when you see Brad Sweet hit it in bike, losing mm-hmm. about a Macri, Brent Marks, everyone it, in the top eight hit that curb on two and bike like a. You had to hit it right, it's like, and it, it, it created opportunities, awesome. guys. For guys to pass and it wasn't like to the point though where it was like dangerous and guys are flipping or anything it was just getting them out of shape you got to hit it right it made it for a really fun point. feature i think macri <laughs> takes the lead hits it flames boil out from i'm guessing oil <laughs> that he dumped from being so caught <laughs> smoking forever like holy shit mm-hmm. <laughs> like awesome race tyler courtney of a drive Brent morris got screwed by the first lap yeah that flag that sucked but yeah it was jacob allen like i don't know man I loved it. I, I thoroughly watched it on flow and thoroughly enjoyed all of it, which is weird yeah. for me. Same. So. Uh, and I was just going to say that from Tyler. Love the tunnel. I think that's the coolest feature of this track is that they have a tunnel. Usually you have like, you know, we know here tunnels like Port Royal. And we walk and through them. <laughs> you walk through them. No, they were driving the cars back to the pit area I, through, which is great for like uh, for like time trials and stuff because then they could just go well, right back. I, I saw a thing from Chase Rodman. They had to flatten the wings while in the car to go through the tunnel so they didn't hit the wing on the tunnel. That's crazy. They imagine <laughs> figuring that flatten your wing out and just like <laughs> tear apart a seven hundred dollar wing. JC, what do you think about uh Saturday night's feature? It was entertaining. I was entertained. I thought I, I thought Courtney was still a little bit better, but he just the timing and the way the, the bumps worked and it gave it character. It was just who could make the last mistake last. Right? Like yeah. Who could make the the, la- the last big mistake that killed their momentum enough? Um, uh, definitely entertaining, you know. Um, both both of those, the high limit races were fantastic. Um, yeah, no, no, I mean, enter- entertained for sure. Everything this year with high limit, and I know it's the n- nice new shiny thing, you know. So it'll the honeymoon will eventually wear off, I think, a little bit. But there hasn't been a bad race with high limit. Oh all year and it's such a plethora of guys that can win not even just with the series but guys that end up just showing up and running with them and the outlaws are the same way too don't get me wrong but not quite like this it just feels different with what high limit did they also did this new roulette wheel which i like a lot more it's not just pulling a pill it's like i i want to know exactly which that's exactly where i was going to go with it the, the two cool things that roulette wheel that he did you guys had some bugs to work out but that's cool as shit like I was engaged. Like we don't know. They spin the wheel. They get top of the sponsors and wherever they land. That's a. I love it. I yeah. love that. It's their thing. It's their thing. That's that's the thing mm-hmm. that makes them different, right? Like you do that. That's cool for you. <laughs> um, I think it's cool. Also, like High Limit and World Outlaws can coexist. It's, we're getting yeah. past that that hatred of like, hey, no, these two well, things can coexist. Fans might be. I don't think the series are yet because well, the, the series still we don't kind of resu- refuse to mention anything about. Hey, and that's that's their choice. But I'm yeah. saying, is 
car count wise says these things can coexist. So um, yeah, so that's the good. So you have about forty cars almost at both World of Outlaws. They still had like thirty two or thirty at last night on uh, a Sunday night in right. Texas. Right. They can coexist. F apps. Sprint car racing is in a great spot right now. I think it's it's on. Uh, Everything it's, is going to be okay. We talking about with with you know with some of this where it was like because it was down for a little bit. We're getting back to some of these. Doesn't matter where you go, you're going to have good car counts as long as you know you're promoting it right and all that. You know what I mean? But it, it, it seems like you can go just about to any place in the country and go see good quality racing with good quality cars. And you know you're not going to have to worry about 15 cars showing up unless unless you're unless, you, unless you're well, no unless you actually <laughs> just don't have a good racetrack or don't promote it. That's your choices. Like even Seals is going to have a full field on Sunday unless yeah they should and yeah. then that'll be fun. But like Bass at 42, you have to start somewhere. Bass has done a good job. High limit, phenomenal job. Kubota, everything come on board. We're gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> Jeremy, what do you want to say? I got nothing. I'm just letting you have your you're having your moment tonight, buddy. You, this is I'm, this just, show. I'm, I'm trying just to use my new mic. I'm trying to use my new microphone. You're you are. you're doing all of that, sir. You keep you keep it rolling, my friend. Oh, well. One time I was scared. Anthony Macri went to the corner so shallow that I thought his steering broke, and I thought he was gonna not be in the corner. But you know, Anthony Macri just stabs the brake and. It was fast and turns left, so it worked out. <laughs> um, that's a real thought, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's. Uh, get, there's some been some good fan comments in here. Um, let's go with uh, what do, did you see? Macri's new shirts. Yeah, love the shirts. I, I think it. it's okay. I think Jimmy's it's a corny. hater. I'm not a hater. I think it's corny. I, so. I think it's. I, I, I'm. I'm okay with right. leaning into it. I just think the design and the saying is a little corny, but that's fine. I mean, it's it is what it is. Yeah, because when they're Jimmy. fighting in June, it's going to look silly. <laughs> we don't care about June, buddy. You sell shirts now, so you have new ones in June. Oh, Marketing. Okay. Uh, Jimmy has Bro- a duct tape Lance the Weiss shirt, so it's the same. To me, it's the same thing. Hashtag broke up again. Yeah, but Lance isn't saying. Never mind. No, I'm not going to get into that. He it, it, duct taped his You're name on a car. It. It's the same to thing. To me, it's the same thing. I don't think it is. Pick a lane. I don't think it is. Pick a lane. It's, the same. It, it, it's, it's in the or same don't. lane. It, it's on the same road, maybe, but not in the same lane. Um, <laughs> uh, Steph, like I said, she they, they, they went to Port Royal for the first time. Talk she about saw the tunnel cathedral of tunnels. She <laughs> saw a huge-ass tunnel. That is... It's a, it's amazing. Just and uh, you know, I was talking to her a little bit uh, uh, right before the four ten feature at BAPS yesterday, and it was I'm like just my you know, because I'm a I'm a I'm a port guy. I just wanted to pick her brain on how what you know as a first time person going there, and you know, it's just like man, it's, it's big. Like the fil- <laughs> facility is great, but it just it feels just drop so, down it, levels. It, not just the <laughs> tunnel, but just the whole facility, especially once you go in the infield. Everything just feels so big. Compared to you know, if you go to like a Lincoln or even a Williams Grove, but Williams Grove is even yeah. big, you know. It's because no, no, it's because there's nothing in the infinite port. It's a because that's your stand, right? It's just awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Uh, Casey Hepler, Brandon Shepard going to run four ten. I, I saw this. I don't know if I have an opinion on it, other than, you know, because he can go win a lot of money with late models. So it's, it's cool a, to see him jump track. into a four ten. Home it's a home track. track deal, so it's pretty cool to see him go run run some sprint cars. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he does. I don't think he's going to win or anything, but he should be competitive. You know, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not someone who like. Maybe it's just me, but like, it's cool. I mean, yeah. okay, it's yeah, probably it's cool. bigger. Just... It's probably bigger for Brandon Shepard and late model fans that it's it, wow. Like this guy's going to go do that. Okay. It's good. Good luck. For... Like I don't just like him. I don't know much about the guy. I know he's a winner, but I. Uh, good luck. Just doesn't do it's, much it's, for me. It's cool for that region, kind of like when Lance wanted to run the Hager Sound. It's like, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Oh, that's fair. Um, real quick, Steph, I could have threw a beer at you and hit you in the head yesterday, but you were a little cold, so we didn't do that. Yeah, Chris doesn't so, waste you know. beers. So he wasn't <laughs> we don't waste beers. We don't waste. We're busy drinking Kool Aids and adult beers. 
<laughs> uh, she did ask, uh, how do you think Port is going to do Saturday with Lincoln have a 20K race? And I think that is an interesting conversation to have here. I still think they both get good fields. Um, There's very little crossover, right? Like, right. This, yeah. this is the thing, yeah. I think you, 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 you're going to get Danny back to Lincoln. You're going to get probably Devin to Lincoln. Freddie will get back to Lincoln. They, they've been running port the past two weeks. Freddie's so, been begging to get back to Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a few that will cross over, and you're going to have to, like, well, maybe Lucas Wolf. Um, what's TJ Stutz going to do? Because um, yeah. he has his own ride, and then he has the, the 11 feet at Lincoln. Uh, there, there's a few, that. not many, but there are a few that I'm like, well, you might have to just watch out and see this week, right? Because yeah. they're kind of commitments, and there's kind of not. So Yeah, I mean, you won't see Chase Dietz at Lincoln. Right, no. he's committed to run full port royal for the, royal for the, right. for the okay. title. So, right. so that's I have a problem with that. Like port royal, this is I get why they have their races to run, work together. Like, come on, Lincoln has a right. big race there. Let your I don't I don't think this is I don't think it works that way for this. No, this is different. I think this is a big race for Lincoln, but this is not a traditional yearly. Big race, right? Even when it's a starter for sixty nine hundred dollars, they they don't cancel at Port Royal. I wish they would have too. I don't disagree with you, but they're not. I I I this doesn't surprise me in the least. And honestly, kind of like, kind of feel bad for Port Royal. They've had two four ten races in, right? I understand that, but like, come on, the schedule's not that. They do something else. Do anything, like anything. Super lates, limited lates. They, but they are like, so Port Royal on Saturday. Not only do they have four and maybe just they leave get four tens off probably, the card. It's not that hard. Just leave them on the card. I don't, card. I don't think do it's that big of a deal. I think Lincoln it's three or four that cards much. that are debatable. They're not going to do that for the Kaufman. I would say the same thing to Lincoln if there's the other way around. It's just like I don't know. It's a me thing. They okay, do it for the, they do it for the shows that they should do it for. And I'm not downplaying the Sterner, but this is not one of those that falls in that category for me. That's the problem. They run, yeah, and like Brent, I was just gonna say that they're running super late models and 305s. So if they get 22, 24, 26, 410s, that's a good that's a good night for Port. And but you just Lincoln still has a good shot here of getting 40. You just named off five quality race cars that can't go to Lincoln because of racing for points. Points, right? Port. So you no, might get others. Or, that, no, it's can or won't, and they just decided not to. Yeah, and that might mean there might be some guys that. Hey, I can't. I don't really have a shot at two twenty thousand. I don't really want to. You know, we've seen right. it before, and they're going to go to port. I, I get it. Like, I get there's it. enough cars to go around where this can work. Right. But you really like, will definitely have a bigger car. Right. Do you really sure. think that Austin Bishop, Justin Whittle, Jeff Halligan that don't run Lincoln, like they don't want to run Lincoln, they're going to go to port. It doesn't matter if they're running together. Twenty grand is going to pull them down to Lincoln, right? Like it's just this is just a weird one. I, while I wish you we were right and that would happen. This just isn't that event. It's a rescheduled event. Even though it was planned out, this isn't one where Port goes, hey, well, let's take a back seat for this. I, I wish it was that case, but it's we, guess we, we believe in this 20 grand, right? We believe we know right. it's going to be big, but I'm okay with it being that way because even that 20 grand where some of those guys are like, hey, I'd rather still go win my weekly Port race and get my Port win. They're okay with it. Like they're not heartbroken about it. And Ashley's in the chat here. Hi, Ashley. I get it. I get Long it. Long time no see. But she she agrees. I agree with Jay-Z. It's not our traditional scheduled time for the race, as it was supposed to be in September, remember. Uh, just sucks we won't have Chaser because he has a great Correct. chance to win 20,000. Chase is the one for me that I, I, I'm disappointed wouldn't be there. Yeah. He would be that guy. I, I like I guess, a lot of those other guys, but I, I, I would love to see Chase go race this race. I think for me, it's a, it's a me problem. But like, I just want – I wish we could all work together better. That's all. I but think they, they have do, been they do a lot. They've gotten better. They've gotten better. They've gotten better. They've I think they have better been getting sure. better. Yeah. But I mean, that's just racetracks, but series is like just work together better because everyone benefits when that happens. But, yeah. I mean, I know it's a, it's, it's me being whiny. <laughs> I, I, I get it. Cause they could just, you're, I get what you're saying. They could just run supers and three Oh fives and still have a good night. Right. You know? They can have their night that they're going to get anyway. But And let know, those 14 guys even, Either have a night off because we race you, too much, or go to Lincoln. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the thing is, is like in like what what JC what Jay Z's saying, and what what I agree with is there's still probably even if Port Royal goes dark this week, there's still probably 15, 
15 cars right. that won't go to Lincoln. No, at right. least. I'm with you. I'm with you. No, you're facts. You're, you're factually correct. It's just, yeah. it's unfortunate. It, it, like, so we, Chase East is the only one that I'm like, damn, right? Like, he's already has a win at Lincoln. He's good at Lincoln. He, at time trials show, all the things add up for him to be very competitive in that event. Uh, that's the one that really like, damn, right? And then somebody mentioned Lance. I, I can't imagine Lance comes to Lincoln. That car's ran Lincoln, um, and they've supported Speed Week shows at Lincoln over yeah, the time. The 60, well, Lance. I'm sorry, not that car, but Lance has in the 69K. They'd run Speed Week shows. They'd run some big shows. I just don't see it with them not running a right. bunch yet and not being out a lot at port. That port seat time probably oh. matters to them yeah. for the big shows. So I, I can't see them running Lincoln. But at the same time, if they announce on Wednesday they're going to run for the Sterner in 20 grand, it also wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Like, I would. I, I'm 50 50 on it, but I just I don't see it this week. Yep. You know, and yep. if the weather is supposed to be cold and ugly, maybe they're not coming to Lincoln. I can't yeah. see it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Santa says, I was thinking the same thing. Jimmy, it goes all the way around. It, uh, Lincoln is still running during the Kaufman. Some people consider the fair opener a bigger race, um, you know, uh, because of the atmosphere and, and, you know, Lincoln still runs on that. So, yeah, we know. Um, I get it. So, and the thing is, they both got, they both got to try to. They're probably fine with like, we're gonna have four tens on the card. We can get twenty cars. And we still got these other divisions, and it's still a good weekly race for us. Yeah, you know what I mean. It doesn't have to be thirty-two cars every week. Right. Ideally, you would want that, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yep. Ashley I think, did post I think the be fine. Ashley posted the winner of the fan page for the fan package as well. Hey, uh, go see if you're a winner. We, go see if you're a winner. And we will uh, we will share that after we get off the air here soon. Oh, as we're on over two hours again. Again. God damn it. <laughs> we talk too much. Um so yeah. Um so this weekend, real quick, again, we already talked about in Sterner. Should absolutely get there this weekend. Um Friday night, Williams Grove. Is this the Hennerships? Yes. Yes. It's the Hennerships. Eight thousand win. 8,000 to win, four tens, and street stocks, which will be fun there. Port Royal, like we just were talking about, uh, they have four tens, super late models, 305s. It's also um, autograph and camera night, so they open up the pits for about an hour before everything. Um, so you could go into the pits for free and go get autographs and pictures with any of the drivers. Lincoln, Sterner Memorial. That's the big one this weekend. Go support that as well. And it is on Flow Racing. Um, so check that out. And then Sealands Grove Sunday, their season opener finally. Um, last track here to open. Uh, four tens, limited late models, Roadrunners. Uh, should be a good show. Hopefully they get good weather. Hoping at least, you know, they've been getting like 26 four tens there last year. I'm hoping that they get about the same here, maybe even more. Um, with it being a Sunday show, you know, we've seen the, how many cars have come out and supported BAPS. I'm hoping, you know, Sealands Grove really has limited their schedule a little bit more this year. What kind of what a bigger, you know, not as much weekly stuff and more just geared to larger shows. So, um, so real quick. So I already talked about me and Seth Dietrich having a foot race. Tyler, Tyler Koenig, if you want to race me and Seth Dietrich, Around a whole racetrack, I'm in, buddy. We'll raise it. <laughs> All money raised goes to whatever sponsor the winner chooses. Okay, I don't care whatever race car. Let's make this happen, man. I will foot race you and Seth Dietrich. Little coward hasn't been here. It's, he's grounded probably. So, but um, it's fine. Come on, Tyler, make it happen. Hey, I know the winner. No, winner. I know the winner of the draw. I, I oh, not the big wheels. Oh. Not the big wheels, Brandon. Winner of the draw. But who's the winner of the draw? It landed beside the name of Nate Dager. It na landed beside Nate. Oh, well, so, that's a problem. So it's not Nate. Good. Thank God. And it's not Cody Ryder because it was that was on the other not side. Winner is uh, oh man, am I going to say it wrong? Algian Bowers. Algian oh, Bowers. okay. Okay. It looks like the winner there. Uh, she just announced it on her page. It's live there. So uh, congratulations to. Mr. or Mrs. Bowers, how you? And Bowers. in any case, thank you for tuning into our show. Yes, yes, absolutely. Very cool. Thank you. I, yeah. I, very cool we, of Ashley to do that. Yeah, cool of Ashley to do it. We're huge Ashley competitive fans. Um, I mean, we, we 
Um, third also, time, third time she's been on the show. Actually, I think. Oh three. yeah, that's right. That's this right. is two Cerners and her regular show. That's the first three time guest. Her yeah, Kyle, she's right there with Kyle Keen and Brett Strickler. Kyle, you know. Strickler. Kyle might have been three. I think Strickler was on three times as well. Yeah, but he's also a guest host. Doesn't count. Yeah, it's um, cheating. By the way, Brandon Zerk, <laughs> man, hey, appreciate you checking in here tonight, man. I saw a lot of comments, Brandon. Appreciate yeah. the engagement. Um, I don't think any of the three of us have the World of Outlaw game on console or PC. We are all, on the console. We are all iRacers. Um, yes. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, go ahead. I Chris. have it. I I have it. I just don't use it. Well, that doesn't really answer his question, does it? So we are iRacers, and Chris I tried did. to do it. Um, you know, I should probably go back to console. <laughs> we're we're iRacing guys, so. Uh, there are a few guys in our group that does that, that runs the uh, the console game. I think Troy Wagman's on the console game. Ryan I think Smith, so, yeah. Some buddies of ours. Uh, but none of us are on the console. Listen. Did Ash Capetta is... just make me go to Lincoln to race in a three-person foot racer on Lincoln? I like number three. I don't – that wasn't in the schedule, but – I do want to see Tyler running. I'm not – Yeah, that I'm would not, be fun. I'm not losing to him or Seth, I assure you. Uh, but I listen, think, anybody that is iRacers out there, and you're from Pennsylvania specifically, we do have an iRacing PA Posse League, and we're actively recruiting. So you're on every Tuesday and Thursday nights. Come find us. Shameless plug on the on the, uh, on, the on the league there. But we are looking for new members, and we we're a little uh, a little biased, and we only really let people in from Pennsylvania yeah. because pretty that's how that's all pretty just, much started here. So um, if you're not Posse, you probably don't win very much. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get out of here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, do any of you guys stream it? No, no, we suck, Steph. We suck. No. Okay, we suck. <laughs> but we <don't> uh, stream it. <laughs> hey, maybe we do it on T two T one night. Maybe don't like that. Maybe one night. We can't maybe stream one. any of our chats on T two T. Not the chat, but maybe. Uh, you don't want to see. You don't want to uh, see. Jay Z is only the only good racer. Yeah. Out you don't want to see my Brent Brent Mark Sim team battling out for like 18th. I'm, you I'm my... pulling off the the good tier anymore. I'm I'm like average tier in dirt. But yeah, I, you're I, still ahead of Jimmy. My eye racing <laughs> hi, uh, highlight actually happened a couple weeks ago. I oh. was battling with uh, Troy for third at Williams Grove. Troy Wagabom, my hero. I got the I got the race with him. Oh, I got the race with my hero <laughs> one time too. It was the Kota Kuhn. Um, no. Turns out in our stuff was You're, both. He's in the back we're both just, yeah, yeah, we're both the, trash. Yeah, me and Dakota have had to wreck each other constantly. Yeah, I Dakota and I set the cart same, slow as fuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna get out of here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Get to the Sterner this weekend if you can. If not, just get to a track this weekend. Go have some fun or Don't share it on your socials. Forecast. It's gonna be beautiful, seventy sunny. Moi, it's gonna be great. Share on your socials. Yes. See you on Thursday. Have, oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Before I go, oh, you're right. You're right. Is. Roll 7 p.m. Kensley Shear made her debut this yesterday. Um, we're going to talk to her about all of that. But uh, she had a tough night, but it's all right. It's day one. She has talent. Yeah, she won a micro. She's going to do good. Big things happening for Kensley. 7 p.m. Thursday, Tony Sharp and I are going to. Up to Kensley and see what that's see what she's all about. And shout out to Baps too, because I was walking, getting food and coming back in, and on their the screen that works, because I know the one in the infield right now isn't working. Yeah, they had a, their, their big board out there. Average. I just see this big rolling podcast uh <laughs> logo on there. So shout out to Baps for that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Look at Chris Chris is too. Chris is famous. He's got his name out in big neon lights, man. I'm famous Troy Troy Wagabomb. The white hat said hi to me. All right, we're out of here. Thanks, guys. Have a great